Aloha. It is now 5.30 p.m. August 19th, 2020, and this is a public, this public hearing is called to order. My name is Brian Nielsen, and I am the administrator of the Division of Aquatic Resources. I will be conducting tonight's online public hearing. We will now broadcast an overview presentation of the Mo'omomi Community-Based Subsistence Fishing Area proposal before we begin oral testimony. Okay, one more time. Based on information from the 1990s. Aloha and welcome to our online hearing presentation. Considering the evolving COVID-19 situation, protecting the health and welfare of the community is of utmost concern. As such, the public hearing will be held remotely with DAR staff via an online meeting venue on August 19th, 2020. The public can listen to the online public hearing via audio live stream at the link provided here or at the DAR website. And now we begin the formal presentation. The Department of Land and Natural Resources is proposing the adoption of Hawaii Administrative Rules Chapter 13-60.9 relating to the Mo'omomi Community-Based Subsistence Fishing Area, Molokai, or Mo'omomi CBSFA. The proposed rules would establish fishing regulations for the Mo'omomi CBSFA, which will be discussed in more detail a little later on in this virtual presentation. Copies of the proposed rules are available at our DAR website. My name is Luna Kikoa, and I am the Community-Based Subsistence Fishing Area Planner for the Division of Aquatic Resources. And my name is Russell Sparks, and I am an aquatic biologist for the Maui District DAR office. We will be working together to narrate this online public hearing presentation. The purpose of this online public hearing presentation is to provide outreach and background on these proposed administrative rules relating to the Mo'omomi CBSFA. Based on information from the 1993 Molokai Subsistence Task Force, the 1994 State Legislature enacted Act 271, codified as Hawaii Revised Statute 188-22.6. 
this statute authorized the DLNR to designate community-based subsistence fishing areas through administrative rulemaking for the purpose of reaffirming and protecting fishing practices customarily and traditionally exercised for purposes of Native Hawaiian subsistence, culture, and religion. Act 271 provided requirements and criteria for the submission of CBSFA designation proposals to the DLNR for consideration. In addition, Act 271 also required the DLNR to establish a two-year subsistence fishing pilot project within the northwest coastline of Molokai. The Kava'aloa Mo'omomi Bay subsistence fishing pilot demonstration project was implemented on July 1st, 1995 and ended on June 30th, 1997. The expiration of the pilot project in June of 1997 voided any language or requirements specific to that pilot project. Part 1 of Act 271, however, is still valid and established guidance for the state to work with community members and other interested stakeholders to learn from the two-year pilot project and to move forward and establish a long-term CBSFA in the area. Since the pilot demonstration ended in 1997, community stewardship has continued with routine marine debris beach cleanups, on-site education to school groups and other visitors, reconstruction and maintenance of the community pavilion, propagation of plants and the installation of various erosion control efforts, restoration of fences and the maintenance of grass and native vegetation, installation of new fences to protect fragile coastal dune ecosystems and vegetation, and continuing to hold community meetings to plan for future marine resource management efforts. Leading up to this public hearing, there were many public outreach and scoping meetings held. The following are some of the most recent and relevant public meetings that involve community members and the LNR staff. In January 2014, there was a public information and scoping meeting with the LNR staff at the Mitchell Powale Center. To follow up on the January 2014 meeting, the community held some additional open community workshops from November 2014 through November of 2015. DLNR held two public scoping meetings on Molokai, one on Oahu and one on Maui. Following up on the scoping meetings, DLNR staff participated in several additional Molokai community stakeholder meetings. These meetings were held, conducted June 2017 through March 2018. On April 13, 2018, the Land Board approved the formal Chapter 91 rulemaking. In January 2020, Governor Ige approved draft Mo'omomi CBSFA rules for public hearing. The legal notice of this online public hearing was published in the July 19th, 2020 Sunday issue of the Honolulu Star Advertiser. Okay, we will now go through some of the main points in these proposed Mo'omomi CBSFA rules. Section 13-60, Point nine dash one describes the purpose of the new rule proposal as the following. To sustainably support the community, the consumptive needs of communities along the north coast of Molokai through culturally rooted community based management. To ensure the sustainability of nearshore ocean resources in the area through effective management practices, including the establishment of limits on the harvest of aquatic life to recognize and protect customary and traditional native Hawaiian fishing practices that are exercised for subsistence, cultural and religious purposes in the area. And finally, to facilitate the substantive involvement of the community in resource management decisions for the area through dialogue with community residents and resource users. Section 13-60.9-2 provides definitions for a number of key terms used in this chapter, including the names of regulated marine life and the various types of regulated fishing gears and methods. Section 13-60.9-3 describes boundaries for the Mo'omomi CBSFA, including the portion of the northwestern coast of Molokai, consisting of all state waters and submerged lands between Leo Point in the west and the Hoa Flat in the east. In addition, the Kava'aloa Bay protected area is established as a subzone within the Mo'omomi CBSFA. Specific proposed regulations include the following. For uhu or parrotfishes, 
there is a proposed prohibition on the harvest of any uhu, ele ele, or uhu, uli uli, which are terminal phase blue colored males for the two larger red lip and spectacled parrotfish. A proposed closed season from April 1st through June 30th in which no person would be allowed to take or possess any uhu palukaluka or uhu ahuula, which are the female red colored red lip spectacled parrotfish. From July 1st through March 31st, these uhu could be harvested, but no person would be allowed to take more than a total of two uhu palukaluka or uhu ahuula per day or possess more than a total of two of these uhu at any one time. The current statewide minimum size limit of 12 inches for all uhu will remain in effect. For kumu, a white saddle goatfish, there is a proposed closed season from January 1st through March 31st in which no person would be allowed to take or possess any kumu. From April 1st through December 31st, kumu could be harvested, but no person would be allowed to take more than two kumu per day or possess more than two kumu at any one time. No person would be allowed to take or possess any kumu greater than 16 inches fork length, and the existing statewide minimum kumu size restriction of 10 inches fork length would also remain in effect. Legal harvest would therefore be limited to kumu between 10 and 16 inches in fork length. For kole, gold ring surgeon fish, there is a proposed closed season from April 1st through June 30th in which no person would be allowed to take or possess any kole. From July 1st through March 31st, kole could be harvested, but no person would be allowed to take more than 20 kole or possess more than 20 kole at any one time. No person would be allowed to take or possess kole less than five inches fork length, for Moai, Pacific Threadfin, this proposal would only allow for take by hook and line, spear, or throw net. No person would be allowed to take or possess any Moai greater than 18 inches or less than 11 inches, which is the existing state rules. Legal harvests would therefore be limited to Moai between eight, 11 and 18 inches in fork length. Other existing statewide Moai rules would still apply, including closed seasons from June 1st to August 31st. And the 15 fish per day bag limit. For ULA or spiny lobsters, there is a proposed bag limit allowing the take of and or possession of no more than two ULA at any one time. ULA could only be taken by hand harvest or by hook. All other statewide ULA rules will remain in effect, including the closed season from May 1st through August 31st, the minimum carapace length of three and a quarter inches, and the no taking of any females. For OPE, no person would be allowed to take any OPE while diving within the area. For Limu, no person would be allowed to take or possess any Limu with holdfast or roots attached. Fishing practices are proposed to be further restricted by a prohibition on night spearfishing, with no person being allowed to take or possess marine life while diving within the area between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. In addition, it is proposed to make it unlawful for any person within the area to engage in or attempt to engage in scuba spearfishing, to possess both scuba gear and a spear at the same time, or to possess both scuba gear and spirit aquatic life at the same time. Any subsistence fishing, as a subsistence fishing area, the proposal would make it unlawful for any person to sell or offer for sale any marine life taken from within the area or to otherwise take marine life from within the area for commercial purposes, provided that any fish may be taken by trolling for commercial purposes and may be sold or offered for sale. And deep seven bottom fish species may be taken in waters deeper than 40 fathoms for commercial purposes and may be sold or offered for sale. Section 1360.9-5, Kavaloa Bay Protected Area, describes the permitted and prohibited activities in the bay. 
it would be unlawful for any person to take or possess any marine life within the Kavalaloa Bay protected area, except that a person could do the following. Take and possess a ama crab by hand harvest at any time. Take and possess limu during the daytime only between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., provided that no person shall take limu with the whole fast or roots attached. Take and possess any fish species using a throw net during the daytime only between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. and take and possess any fish with hook and line during the daytime only between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., provided that only artificial lures may be used. In addition, it would be unlawful for any person to engage in operating a vessel or conduct any other activity that may otherwise disturb the marine environment within the Kavaloa Bay protected area, except as permitted by federal law. Shown here are the proposed boundaries for the Kavaloa Bay protected area. Section 13-60.9-6 would establish minimum and maximum administrative fines for first, second, and third or subsequent violations of this chapter. It also reaffirms that administrative fines imposed for any violation of this chapter do not preclude the imposition of criminal penalties as provided by law. All right. Now we will, now that we've covered the proposed administrative rules, we would like to take a little bit of time to address some frequently asked questions compiled from community me meetings and public scope. How is community defined? The proposal for CBSFA designation must not, must be submitted by a community organization. There is no specific statutory definition for community, but rather details on what it takes to be considered a community organization. Are these community rules? The proposal originates from a community-based organization, in this case, Kui Malama O Momomi. But the DLNR conducted its own further meetings to gain input from all interested stakeholders. Who will enforce these rules? These rules, if finalized, will be DLNR state rules and can only be enforced by DLNR enforcement officers. How will the proposed CBSFA boundaries develop and justify? The Ilio Point to Nihoa Flats area has been historically assessed through a network of coastal trails, and the one mile offshore boundary is consistent with traditional Hawaiian resource management practices and makes sense from a biological and ecological perspective due to the habitat range of coral reef species and the connectivity of nearshore ecosystems. Does this proposal restrict vessels in the designated CBSFA area? There is no restrictions of vessel use or transit of the general CBSFA area, but there is a proposed prohibition of the operation of vessels within the Kava'aloa Bay nursery area. Why not allow for scuba spearfishing? Scuba spearfishing is a modern form of fishing which is not accepted as a traditional subsistence fishing method. In addition, there is concern that this fishing method is too efficient and may overharvest from critical deeper water resource stocks. Can community volunteers be trained in enforcement and deputized to enforce the CBSFA rules? No, there is no voluntary community enforcement program in existence and only fully authorized and trained enforcement officers can enforce state rules. Community volunteers can participate in education and outreach and can be trained to observe and report resource violations to state enforcement officers. Many involved communities do this through the Makai Watch program. What are consequences of vigilantism? Vigilantism is illegal and will not be tolerated in CVSFAs or at any location. Community groups involved in the CVSFA process are fully educated about what is acceptable and are trained to help prevent any illegal vigilantism within their communities. Will these rules restrict shoreline access? This area designation and the rules if approved have no effect on coastal access. Coastal state lands are free and open to all. And in areas that are private property, the state has no ability to dictate who is or is not granted access.
There are three ways to participate in this public hearing. You can present live video oral, te oral testimony via internet or telephone at an online public hearing on August 19, 2020 from 5.30 to 9.30 p.m. To participate, you will need either a computer with internet access, video camera, and microphone, or a telephone. To sign up, please email your request to cbsfa at hawaii.gov or call 808-347-0317 at least 48 hours in advance. Please include your email, full name, and phone number. A confirmation will be sent to you with instructions at the meeting link and call-in number. You can view the online peer public hearing at this link. Anyone without reliable telephone or internet, internet access can also present testimony in person by appointment only on August 19, 2020 at the following times and location listed on this slide. To provide testimony in person at one of these public hearing locations listed, please email cbsfa at hawaii.gov or call 808-347-0317 to register at least 48 hours in advance. Please include your full name, phone number, and hearing location. A confirmation will be sent to registrants with instructions for testifying in person. All wishing to provide in-person testimony must wear a mask at all times and comply with physical distancing guidelines. Only one person at a time will be allowed into the hearing room to present their testimony to a hearing officer. All others will be required to wait outside or in their vehicles into their assigned time slot. And finally, you can also participate by mail or email written testimony by August 26, 2020 to the Division of Aquatic Resources, DAR, 1151 Punchbowl Street, room 330, Honolulu, Hawaii, 96813, or email dlnr.aquatics at hawaii.gov or cbsfa at hawaii.gov. We will now explain the online public hearing testimony process. You will follow the link sent to you and provide your name, email, and phone number affiliation. Testifiers will be called on by the hearing master to offer testimony. Until that time, you will be placed in a waiting room. While waiting to provide testimony, you will need to mute your microphone and turn off your video. When it is your turn to speak, you will be given full access to the meeting. At that time, if you are watching the YouTube live stream, you will need to mute the YouTube live stream to avoid feedback. When testifying, please state your first and last name for the record. If you are testifying on behalf of an organization, please include the name of the organization as well. Testimony will be limited to a maximum of three minutes. You will be given notice when 30 seconds remain. If you continue to testify beyond your allotted time, the hearing master will kindly ask you to complete your testimony. If you have submitted written testimony and have also signed up to deliver it orally, the hearing master will ask you to kindly summarize your points. When you have finished testifying, you will be put back in the waiting room. You can then end your video call or a Zoom and continue to monitor the hearing on YouTube Live. Staff will be monitoring people joining the online public hearing by video and will do their best to take each person in an orderly fashion. Please be patient as we continue to navigate this new platform. For those providing testimony at one of the in-person locations around the state, you will need to make a reservation by email at cbsfa at hawaii.gov or by phone at 808-347-0317. You'll be scheduled to arrive at the venue at your scheduled time. You will be able to view the online presentation. After viewing the presentation, you will be moved to a waiting area at which time you will be called into another area with a hearings officer to provide your testimony in person. Decision-making on the proposal will be based on testimonies presented. The department will submit its findings and recommendations to the Board of Land and Natural Resources. If approved by the board, the Department of the Attorney General will conduct a final legal review. If approved, the proposed rules will be given to the governor for his final approval. Should the governor grant approval, certified copies will be filed with the Lieutenant Governor and after 10 days, the rules will become effective as law. This ends our online public hearing presentation for the adoption of Hawaii Administrative Rules, Chapter 13-60.9, relating to the Mo'omomi Community-Based Subsistence Fishing Area, Molokai, 
or Mo'omomi CBSFA. We hope you will be able to join us on August 19, 2020 for the Mo'omomi CBSFA online public hearing or at any of our lift listed in-person testimony gathering locations. For more information, please visit the DAR webpage or email dlnr.aquatics at hawaii.gov or cbsfa at hawaii.gov or call 808-347-0317. Mahalo nui for your time. Okay, that concludes, that concludes the presentation section of the hearing and now we will move on to oral testimony. When testifying, please state your name, first and last name for the record. If you are testifying on behalf of an organization, please include the name of the organization as well. Please state the place of residence and also state clearly whether you support, oppose, or have no position on the proposed rule today. Please remember you will have three minutes to testify. We will show a warning at one minute and then another sign when you are out of time. Out of respect to all the testifiers, please stick to the three minute time limit today. If you wish to provide extended testimony, please do so in writing and email that or mail it to our office. Uh, we will now begin public testimony. Our first testifier is Kaimi Kaupiko. Kaimi. You can go ahead and begin your testimony whenever you're ready. Can you hear me? Oh. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, and you can see me, okay. All right, mahalo. Um, I'm going to be... Um, sharing uh, my testimony in support of Mo'omomi's CBSFA. And I also have um, my dad here who will share after me. I wanted to read my testimony for everyone. Um, Aloha Makako, my name is Kaimi Kaupiko. I come from Miloli'i, um, one of Hawaii's last fishing communities. And I'm writing this letter in support of Mo'omomi's CBSFA. Um, I'm a strong believer in the Konohi Konohiki system of management. Um, as a Lavai Apono, we gather fish for feeding our families and community. The sustainability of our fish stocks depends on our ability to create balance and learn from what our kupunas have done for generations. Mo'omomi is one of the few places that is in tune with the Aina. Our community was blessed to work with Uncle Mac Poi Poi of Ho'olehua Hawaiian Homestead. His work to understand and learn from his Aina has been an example for our Lahui. For the past three years, both of our communities, communities created a partnership. Um, we call the Mohala na Konahiki. And through this blending of two communities, we were able to learn about our fish stocks, their life cycles and biology, and, we and how to kilo to be able to build the foundation. I agree, with the commercial, I agree that commercial activity in this area needs to be limited. And the designation of this area as a community-based subsistence fishing area and adoption of rules by DLNR is the most effective way to achieve this. Our Hui was able to visit Mo'omomi in 2018 to see firsthand the place that will, places that will be protected. We stand, we spend the time walking, learning, and educating ourselves of the proposed rules, the pu'uhonua, the bag limits, and gear restrictions. These protective measures are backed by the years of Kilo by the Ohana, as well as the work by many partners. The rules on Uhu, Opihi, and Kole is vital as we have seen less and less fish in our own community. Ho'olehu Molokai has been working for the past 30 years to establish a management plan to protect their fishing grounds. A CBSFA is a good for communities. It allows us to have a say in our own place and um, how to manage. For the, for the Lavai Apono, Ohana Mo'omomi, we are blessed to support your efforts to Malamakai. It's about time that the state, Dilanar, and Arlahui see that the proposed CBSFA and its rules finally be heard. It's about time. Imua Mo'omomi. Mahalo. I'd like to pass it on to my dad who's going to give his short testimony. 
Thank you Aloha. for your testimony. Great. Aloha Kako. This is Willie Kaupiko. Um, like my son said, Kaimi, um, we support them highly. Um, I know the people of Molokai and been there and I, I look at Molokai is a very um, strong subsisting areas, you know, kind of remind of us in Mililii, how we was brought up and the ocean is our, our ice box as well as our garden. And we'll start how to take and malama. We need to um, do that everywhere, you know, because now um, people are forgetting the values and they're not respecting uh, um Maki wants to bring back the Konohike. I believe we want to bring back that to here. The, we used to have the Konohike rice on the our pelo. You know, you can't, we fishing, we feed our own opelo and we gather. Every place here, Hokena, Napapo, now in the old days, in the 50s, when I was, I'm the youngest one, and my dad was uh, the controller. He's the mayor down here, and everybody have to fish in accordingly to what was taught traditionally. And during those days when the, the, the Opelo season was on and everybody gathered, uh, you know, know when to go and take those fishes and when to stop. You know what I mean? When they're breeding, we don't. I, I think uh, it's, it's so important that we bring back that. You know, we get the understanding when is the breeding season of all these fish. The old folks was always talking about first moon, second moon, you cannot go get because they believe the crabs breeding, the opihi breeding. You know, the science was almost like the science today I hear from the biologists, you know? So what I want to do, and we have the same problem here in Middle Lee. Um, people think we get all the fish, we get all opihi. Just two weeks ago, I had some uh, people came from Hilo and took about 400 pounds of opihi. I can't imagine what kind of damage, but you know, the state gotta wake up, you know, this commercial thing gotta stop. Let the people vote for what they can do. People want to raise their own, so like tropical fish. You know, that's, I'm glad we shut it down. I'm so happy that <clears throat> we, we can leave the fish in the ocean and God put them there for a reason. And that's what we need to do. We are the managers. And so, um, for, yeah. So I, I, I duly support um, the Momomi, CBSM, and uh, hopefully that it goes through because we're gonna be next with our CBSM here and we're gonna uh, do similarity of what uh, the Mecca and the people there in Molokai are doing. Is this is for the, the generation to come, right? especially now, it's very fragile out there, especially with the climate, yeah? You could summarize, Kaupiko, Mr. Kaupiko, you're just about out of time. Okay, so I wanna just tell you, I support them and uh, hope everything goes fine with them. Aloha, mahalo. Yep. Thank you for your testimony. Next up, we have Russell Kostrom. Uh, Russell, you're on mute. Thank you. Aloha, my name is Russell Kallstrom and I work for the Nature Conservancy here on Molokai, where we manage the Mo'omomi Preserve, a coastal dune ecosystem that has persisted from an ancient era and is home to thriving native plant and animal communities. Excuse me. It is a sacred place that encompasses the full cycle of death and life. Hupuna are buried in its sands and it is a place where Hawaiians have been collecting food resources from its shores for centuries. I'm here testifying on behalf of the Conservancy in support of the proposed community-based subsistence fishing area and will be providing a condensed version of the written testimony submitted by, by our executive director. While Mo'omomi is in better shape than fisheries statewide, Homestead and Kama'aina families, kupuna fishers and gatherers know and have expressed that some fish species have been in decline for some years now. Although the community has been practicing its kuleana to take care of this place, outside fishing pressure is likely to increase and we believe now is the time to prepare. 
Now is the time to elevate the kind of management articulated by the Hawaiian proverb, when you take care of the ocean, it takes care of you. This community management model proposed from Oumomi provides the Ho'olehua community a path forward to maintain traditional practices guided by cultural values while collaborating with the state's division of aquatic resources to allow for maximum public participation in sustainable management of coastal resources. This management model is about everyone working together from lessons learned on Kauai. When communities and the state come together, they're not just sustained, but the ocean resources are respected and abundant. This proposal has met every requirement of the law and was extensively vetted through community and stakeholder consultations. I started by talking about cycles. I've seen firsthand when we take action and malama, the resources will be abundant. As we've worked together, seabirds have returned and now Mo'omomi is home to the largest and fastest growing seabird colony in Maui County. Those birds bring ocean resources back to land, completing the nutrient cycle, and that makes the fishery stronger and more resilient. The Kumulipo, the Hawaiian origins chant, talks about kia'i, something on land that guards over something in the ocean. At Mo'omomi, the akiaki grass is nourished by the seabirds, which watches over the limu akiaki. And that is the question before us today. And it is a question to all of us, state, community organizations, homesteaders, and it is not will the akiaki, the seabirds or others take care, but will we? Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Johanna Stone. Aloha mai kako. Oh, let me do my video. Aloha mai, my name is Johanna Stone and I support the Ho'olehua Homestead and Palaau community members who want to sustain their abundance. I agree with that commercial activities in this area need to be limited. The designation of this area as a community-based subsistence fishing area and adoption of rules by DLNR is the most effective. Okay. Okay is the most effective way to achieve this. Working with the DLNR to limit commercial activities is essential. Every community has the ability and the right to manage our shoreline area activities now and for future generations. I support the proposed CB, SFA and rules for the Mo'omomi and Northwest Molokai and I encourage you to do the same. I would also like to see community managed fishing areas and limitations like those found in this proposed CBSFA in my own ahupua'a of Kailua and Ko'olaupoko and in every ahupua'a in our, our archipelago that desires this way of sustaining our resources. In this case, our icebox, which is our ocean. We want to respect the breeding times of our fish. We only want to take what we need to sustain ourselves and as much as the ecosystems can support. We see in areas like Haena that have implemented CBSFA, healthier ecosystems through an increased abundance and size of our ocean species. Commercial activities need to be limited because they do not steward our resources into abundance as our ancestors did. They simply take with no end concern or attention for managing our limited resources. When we follow our ancestral ways of resource stewardship through things like our kapu, we enable ourselves to always be able to harvest and to be sustained from the nourishment of the ocean. We must actively steward abundance so we will always have more than enough. I support the designation of Mo'omomi as a CBSFA. Mahalo nui. Thank you for your testimony. Next testifier is Sandy Ward. Aloha my kako. Can you hear me? Yes, you're coming in loud and clear. All right. Um, my name is Sandy Ward. I represent the Malama Pu'uloa program of Huio Ho'onua on Oahu. I appreciate the opportunity to testify in support of the Ho'olehua Homestead and Palau communities. And I am in full support of their proposed CBS FA for Mo'omomi and Northwest Molokai. 
as a retired environmental science teacher on Oahu. My students and I studied the efficacy of locally managed marine areas and their positive impacts around the globe. And when they asked me why this conservation method wasn't utilized more on, in Hawaii, I was never able to provide a good answer. I do appreciate all the work that the state agencies uh, like DLNR do with their tiny budgets, but I do not believe they have the capacity to manage our natural resources, including our reefs and near shore waters without engaging the community. And further, since I've retired from teaching and now run a community nonprofit focused on the restoration of Pu'uloa, Pearl Harbor, I've been fortunate to continue to learn from skilled Hawaiian kilo and local ia practitioners. I value the practice of utilizing and honoring Hawaiian generational ancestral wisdom and a quest to effectively steward our natural resources in these challenging times, especially our food security. Subsistence fishing must be protected and the CBS FA proposed for Molokai provides a means of effectively doing so. In fact, I believe this is a model program that has promise for implementation throughout Hawaii, and we owe it to future generations to involve communities in this type of effective resource management. I support the proposed CBSFA and the rules for Mo'omomi and Northwest Molokai uh, presented by the generational wisdom of those communities. Mahalo for considering my testimony. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Don Hager Norblum. Aloha, can you uh, hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Great. Listen, I did support, um, I did submit testimony last night, but I'll read it and I'll try to be very um, quick about it. Uh, as you see, there's a picture of Papahaku Dune behind me, which is of course on beautiful Molokai as well. I wanted to say that I support the public testimony in support of the adoption of chapter 13-60.9 Hawaii Administrative Rules entitled Mo'omomi Community-Based Subsistence Fishing Area for Molokai. And I support this because I do believe that um, fish stock and traditional and customary traditional Hawaiian rights need to be protected. Uh, and I can say that I would ask that DLNR actually also uh, provide funding sources if possible. And I'm not quite sure if the rules allow for funding or you know, maybe there's a private partner public ship that could be done. But I just wanted to kind of throw it in there since we are testifying. Um, I support the many voices on Molokai who have contributed to the plan, the Kapuna, Fisher, Gatherers, Ho'oloa, Homesteaders, Molokai Community, Marine Scientists, Land Stewards, Teachers, Students, Scholars, DAR, of course, and all the other community and uh, state and federal agencies. Um, I just wanna say as a professional, I did work for DLNR for the Office of Conservation and Coastal Lands, and I was a senior planner and I've had to deal with issues on Molokai. And I believe that having rules that are regulatory would be very helpful for uh, regulating fishing and having people not come in and perhaps uh, take fish in areas that they shouldn't. Um, I will say that I'm familiar with uh, Mo'omomi through the Department of DBED Office of Planning, MAXAG Council, and also with um, the creation of the Papahaku Dunes Cultural and Natural Resource Plan. So I just wanted to say that every time I've come to Molokai, it's been beautiful. Mo'omomi deserves to be protected. And I wanted to give uh, DLNR, DAR, a lot of acknowledgement and support for pushing these rules forward. And I support the rules and that's it. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Welcome. Next up is Makaala Ka'amuana. You're on mute. Makaala Ka'amuana. And if you could turn off your YouTube feed, it, it great. Thank you. Aloha. My name is Makaala Kaumwana. I live on Kauai. You can enjoy Hanalei in the mist behind me. I strongly support the Mo'omomi CBSFA. I've been working with community health and resilience for half a century. 
The work is best done when we begin and end with the community voice and knowledge. This is exactly what Mo'omomi is about. The work in this place began our work in other communities in Hawaii. They published the very first place-based moon and tide calendar in Hawaii, the real one. The one that used the experience of Mo'omomi and taught Moloka'i and the rest of us what pono fishing was really all about. Fishing is our life here, and we have been fishing pono since before Hawaii was a state. Mo'omomi is ready to provide the example once again of what we can do when we pay attention. Uncle Mac taught us all what it meant to value what the fishermen know, the real fishermen, walking silently, watching and seeing everything, paying attention, understanding the cycles, getting the facts, and then fishing in ways that protect the fish and the place. That is resiliency, that is healthy. If you catch more than you need, you share it with your neighbors. Don't waste and don't hoard in the freezer. The Mo'omomi project is guided stringently by the science. Fishing with the facts, not when convenient. Fishing for more fish. That is what the CBSFA program is all about. Fishing for the future, not just filling the cooler. Mo'omomi, like other CBSFAs, will develop specific rules utilizing a Konohiki Advisory Council. Fishing for more fish. That's what it's about. Nine families who know the place and depend on the resources, adjustable rules that will change with the conditions specific to this place. When asked in 1999 how we could support our local fishermen and their community resilience, Uncle Max said, gather us. And now over 50 communities throughout Hawaii gather annually to learn from each other and how to best manage the resources on which we all depend. That's the value of CBSFA. That's the purpose of Mo'omomi. That's the reason I speak to you today. Sharing our knowledge and experience benefits all of Hawaii. More fish for everyone and healthy, resilient communities. We know in Ha'ena that this program works. Fear will not secure our future. Facts and Pono practices will. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next testifier up is Scott Crawford. Aloha to uh, everyone, uh, Dar and um, everyone listening. I'm testifying on behalf of the Kipahula Ohana and Uncle John Lind and Auntie Tweedy Lind and Uncle Mike Min and all of our staff and Ohanas of Kipahulu. And the Kipahulu Ohana supports the proposal of Hui Malama Omoomomi on behalf of the Ho'olea Hawaiian homesteaders in cooperation with DLNR and community members to designate a CBSFA for Moomomi and the North Coast of Molokai. Kipuhulu Ohana is a Hawaiian nonprofit organization dedicated to the cultural sustainability of the Kipuhulu Moku in East Maui through educational, agricultural, and resource management projects from Mauka to Makai. Um, we developed our Malama Ike Kai action plan, and as part of that, our application for the designation of Kipuhulu Moku as a CBSFA. Uh, which we submitted to DAR in late 2019. One of the reasons why Kipuhulu Ohana chose to pursue a CBSFA designation for our MOKU and why we support Mo'omomi CBSFA is that of the various types of fisheries management areas available under state law, Hawaii CBSFA designation formally recognizes local communities as valued partners in protecting natural resources and is the only type that reaffirms and protects traditional and customary practices for subsistence and culture as part of the basic purpose of the fisheries area. It isn't just about the biology and healthy fish populations, it is about maintaining the resources so that they support the traditional lifestyle of the people. Through our participation as co-founding community of the Maui Nui Makai Network, our members have had the fortunate opportunity to work with Malama Mo'omomi and the Mo'omomi North Coast of Molokai communities to learn about their efforts to restore abundance to Mo'omomi reefs and nearshore waters, including their proposal to designate the area as a CBSFA. We see Mo'omomi as a model and an inspiration for all of our efforts. 
like our East Maui communities, we know that the ohana of the Ho'olehua Hawaiian homestead and the surrounding areas have and continue to rely upon fishing and gathering of marine resources for their subsistence and well-being. The health and resilience of the fishery is integral to ensuring that subsistence, cultural, and religious practices continue for current and future generations. Hui Malama Omomomi on behalf of the homesteaders and other Kamaaina families and Kupuna of Molokai and Maui Nui have worked together for 30 years to Malama these subsistence resources. Since 1993, after observing a dramatic decline in marine life, the Hui has been actively working to restore abundance by caring for, studying, and managing the cultural and marine resources within the proposed CBSFA area. Following extensive outreach over decades to tens of thousands of people through meetings, field trips, Levaya camps, publications, and other individual and group engagements, you many of summarize. which prompted dozens of revisions and compromises, almost done. The community submitted their proposal to DLNR for your consideration and to engage in this formal rulemaking process. We encourage your support of the sustainable management of the Mo'omomi North Coast of Molokai fishery resources and the traditional practices of the people through designating this area as a CBSFA. Mahalo. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, next up is Hala Pakala. And you're on mute. Uh, you're still on mute. You have please mute what is on there right now. Coming in loud and clear because now. Because it's going to give feedback there. Uh, Thank you for your testimony. Now if you can turn off the YouTube. Aloha my kako. Thank you. Um, my name is Hala Pakala. I am currently a homesteader in Kamilolo Onialii homestead area on the island of Molokai. Uh, I am a fourth generation homesteader. My father, as his father before him and his father before him, were all Ho'olehua homesteaders. If you grew up on Molokai, majority of us live some sort of subsistence lifestyle which is why I am in support of CBSFA. Two thirds of our life growing up was subsistent. We either grew, raised, or gathered what we had to eat. In order for subsistence to be, or our subsistence lifestyle to be sustainable, we need resource management. I feel that the limits proposed by CBSFA are good limits. 20 kole a day per person is more than enough to feed your family. I have four children. Right now I have five grandchildren. My sons hunt, they fish, and we all practice to the best of our ability resource management, never taking more than we need. That is one way to keep it sustainable. For the rest of the state and for a lot of our, you know, a lot of the people here, they need to be taught to be sustainable. And laws such as proposed by CBSFA will help to make that possible. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Kale Huakea Kelling. Aloha, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Um, my name is Kalihua Kia Kelling. I will be testifying in support of CAB SFA and Mo'omomi. My kave kiu o maona kea, kamaone ku hanu hanu nei, makumoku o keabe, ahi ki loa aku i kavela o pani au, ke kua hivi noho iu iu a kahele lani. Au hea o ko e ka aha BLNR, a au hea o ko e na kini na mamo ka aina momona. O au ke iau kalehua kea keling, he kama no kamaka ewa ewa o oahua kakui hawa, a me kaua apua kea e malama nei ka lupa lupa o iwa le kaa. Eia au e ka anamana o nei i keia po o hoaka, ma kamalama o mahoi mua e kako o piha i ka hookumu ana i ka CBSFA ma mo o momi a eia na kumu. 
no ke kumumua ke ike mauli ne na kaya ulu o ia wahi i ka awi anau na lahulu i a o iwi. E like ho i me ke kole oe, ka moe oe, a me ka uhu oe. Wahi ana ka maaina kaka i kahi ka ike ana i na lahulu ula a me ke kumu. I na hoa mau ki ia mau hana o ka lawe pakela ana i kai a, i na anau e pau ana ka lako o na hanau na hiki mai ana a hoka. No ke kumu e lua, wahi aku puna e ai ke kahi e kapi ke kahi. Me ka mana o e lawe wale ka mea e pono ai ka ohana. He ike ku una ia ka lawe ana ka mea e pono ai. Me ka hoa kumu ana i wakapu i mea e hoa ulu ai ka nui a. A oli i maa ka lehu lehu o ki a hanau na i ki a velo ku una a oia no ke kumu ka aui ana o ki a mau lahului a. No laila, he kūpono ka hoa kumu ana i kia CBSFA no ka hoa mau ana i nga loina mo o meheo Hawaii. Ano ki kumu e kolu, o iai he mau kupa ki e mau lala kai a ulu e noi nei no ka hoa kumu ana i kia ipu kai. E aho kako e kako o a hoa lohe i kia mau kama aina. A e aho kako e a ina kai a ulu e hoa holo i ina manao no ka pono ko lako aina pono i o iai nga lako i malama. Pela ano e mau ai ke eo ka aina. Ano laila, vaiho ai i mau mana o ne ia o ko no ke kako o piha ana i ke kaya ulu o hoolehua a me ke kupaa ana ma hope o ka aina. A hiki i ke aloha aina hope loa. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next testifier up is Audrey Newman. Aloha, Brian. Aloha, aloha mai, and mahalo for this opportunity to testify and support my strong support for the Moomomi community-based sustainable fishing area. Um, my name is Audrey Newman, and I've lived in Kalai on the island of Molokai for the past 18 years. And um, I first visited Moomomi about 30 years ago when I had the privilege of being part of the team that helped create the Nature Conservancy's Moomomi Preserve next door and I've, um, I've loved the place ever since. Since then, I've, had the, I've worked with island communities around the world to help them protect their natural resources using community-based management that honors traditional values and empowers local control. So I'm, you know, they're, there are so many people sharing their mana'o there today. Um, um, on the coastline and I'm kind of, I, I'd like to share a little perspective from the international, how the world sees Mo'omomi. So it, starting in the 1990s, traditional leaders from the Pacific would come to, came to Molokai to talk story with Mo'omomi and to see how the community used their traditional authority to manage their resources, to take care of them. And many of those leaders were really inspired and went home to do the same. And what they found, <clears throat> excuse me, is the same thing that I think many communities here are encountering, that, um, that the modern world and commercial fisheries did not respect their traditional authority. And they weren't allowed to um, protect the lands and waters that they depended on. And they needed government recognition and government support to empower them. So across the Pacific, those communities passed new laws they created new programs, they built new organizations, and they championed, they changed the courts that um, in their countries so that they could manage their resources wild, wisely. That's what this CBSFA designation will do. And in fact, I see the CBSFA as a shield and a sword the community can use to protect their resources and their rights to harvest for generations to come. Last year, Molokai's long-term commitment to wise stewardship at Moomomi was recognized by the United Nations Development Program um, with their Equator Prize. And um, the people of Ho'olehua, of Palaau, and of Molokai really deserve our deepest mahalo for their visionary leadership. They've shown the way. And their experience and their mana'o will continue to help us all be better marine conservation. So, Mo'omomi deserves its CBSFA designation today, and they've waited long enough. Thanks. Oh, and my husband is here to do his testimony. We'll switch places. 
Thank you for your testimony. William Garnett is up next. Aloha Kako. My name is William Garnett. I've been working in conservation in Hawaii for almost 40 years for private sector and the public sector. And I want to tell you that anybody who feels that this is somehow the government trying to control the resources doesn't understand the facts because I'm not always in agreement with the way that private and public resources give access to the public on Molokai, the land trust, the National Park Service, even the Nature Conservancy. So I understand the issues that are the history, but this is not at all what we're looking at right now. The world's in a lot of trouble. The oceans are our heart and we need to protect them. Thank you for your testimony. Next testifier on the list is Kelson Mac Poipoi. Actually, uh, we'll go to Malia Kutagawa next. And I think you're on mute still. Aloha mai kako. My name is Malia Akuragawa. I am a professor of law and Hawaiian studies at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Um, I am also from the island of Molokai, Mana Emoku, and the Po'o of the Ahakiole o Molokai. I've known Uncle Mac Poi Poi for many years and have been involved from the very inception when the community-based subsistence fishing area law was adopted in 1994. I was part of the Molokai subsistence study, which was really about expressing to the state that we have two economies, a cash economy and a subsistence economy. And in our, in our study, we discovered that 28% of the average Molokai family's diet was from subsistence fishing, hunting, and gathering. And for Native Hawaiian families, which is the majority of the families on Molokai, about 65% of our families are Native Hawaiian, that 38% of our foods came from subsistence. And that our seafood intake was 10 times greater than the average Oahu household. And what came out of this study was that our Ho'olehua homesteaders, whose icebox is the Mo'omomi fishery, stated that they were seeing a decline in certain numbers of fish in lobster, kumu, uhu, um, moi. And so they urged us to move forward in proposing this community-based subsistence fishing area law. It's important to provide that historical context because this happened 26 years ago and some people's memories are short, even including on our island of Molokai. So this is not a flood fly by night sort of thing. And what came out of that was a two year pilot project. But even though we, could, we proved that traditional knowledge uh, was needed to manage the resources and it was effective in managing the resources, uh, there was no political will to support the CBSFA. And we waited long enough, it's been 26 years. And this is really about our, uh, our ability to exercise our sovereignty and autonomy. And we're not just doing it for Molokai, we're doing it for all the islands because there are multiple communities throughout Kapai Aina, as you have seen through the previous testimony, that need this designation. As we go through climate change and other issues, um, and we need to be doing not one size fits all kind of management, but adaptive management. And our Ahukua'a system and the knowledge of our Konohiki uh, was needed and is needed even more so today to manage our resources. And I believe after 26 years of Kilo, after the amazing knowledge of Uncle Mac Poi Poi, we've proven that this kind of management is effective. So with that, I ask that um, we support the Mo'omomi CBSFA designation. And if it's possible, I'd like to come back at the end of all the testimony to um, um, add additional thoughts since um, I'm running out of time here. So mahalo for this opportunity to testify. 
Aloha. Thank you for testifying, and uh, you're also welcome to provide written testimony if, if you want to provide something more lengthy. Uh, but our next testifier is Kelson Mack Poipoi. Okay, let me change the name. Um, the next. Hello, I'm on. You're on, loud and clear. Okay. <laughs> Hello, my name is Kelsey Poi Poi, and I am a Kamaina of Oliwa, Aupua, Palao Moku, Mokupuni, or Molokai. I am a member of Hui Malama or Mo Mommy, and I support the designation of Mo Mommy CBSFA from Ilu Point to Niwa Flat or to one mile from shore. I've lived on this island for 71 years and was raised here my whole life. I was born with the Kuliana to Malama Aina and Aloha Aina, inherited from those that came before me. The rules package for more mommy is but a small piece of this Kuliana. For the many years we have spent collecting data to develop these rules, we have conclusive evidence to support our findings. Throughout my lifetime, I have had the opportunity to fish and learn from many fishermen, both good and bad, who have provided me with an extensive amount of knowledge. I am thankful and grateful to those who have passed, passed on and in keeping with tradition, I honor them by continuing to Malama and to carry and pass on the Kuleana. Much appreciation also to the many scientists, professors, archeologists, who have been able to work alongside to learn about the history of Mo'o Mo'o'mi in the ocean and on the land. With this knowledge, we can better understand how to treat our place. Couple of regulations are necessary in every society. To not have regulations is not very akamai. We leave ourselves open for exploitation, exploitation and disaster. Our chance to be part of this process should not be overlooked. If we expect to keep our kuleana intact for the next generation, approval of this rules are necessary. In closing, I would like to extend an invitation to everybody who opposed this proposal. Come join us, whether it is data collection, beach cleanups, or planning on how we can work together to improve relations within our community, between our people and our Aina. Sometimes we only see what we like gather but we don't see how to fill that puka we just created. Time to give back. That's all I get to say. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next testifier on the list is Karen Kamalu. Aloha mai kako. My name is Kamalu Poipoi. Um, I live in Ho'olehua, Molokai, Palaau Moku. Uh, I am a Hawaiian language immersion and culture teacher, have been for many years. And uh, I stand for support, in support of the CBSFA. I think about what our kupuna would say if we had to literally stand face to face with the kupuna of our past, they who had the wisdom and capacity 
to continue gathering and survive for over a thousand years in this place we are now occupying at Mo'omomi because of their system, the traditional Konohiki system of resource management, with, which didn't just allow taking, but always balance take with supply. When you took, you found a way to make sure that something else was still there. To ensure that people could eat and have more left for tomorrow and the next year and the next generation. We all know what happened, not what might happen, happened already on all of the islands. The losses of what was abundant, even in some of our lifetimes, is common knowledge. Depletion is an expectation already. The needle has only gone down. When the limu is gone from my area, they used to have plenty. Oh well, gone now. What what are going to do? Let's rebuild the stones so that there's a firm new foundation. The purpose of the CPSFA is to create a partnership with the state who already has full control over all of our state lands, but we can co-manage together. We're being given an opportunity to co-manage with the state as a community. The CBSFA also has years and years of evidence, years and years of study. There are no secrets in it. All you have to do is read it. So many people have not read it and are listening to those who don't want it because they don't want any regulation whatsoever. We need re regulation. We need everyone in the Pai Aina for future generations of Hawaiians. It is kako. It is not just me, my ohana, my gathering rights, but the ability to be able to continue to gather, to have that opportunity. Every Hawaiian, including those unborn, to have the opportunity to know what opihi tastes like, what kole is, the flavor of limu ele ele as our kupuna nu. We can't do that if we let everything go without helping through the CPSFA and Aikako'o. Thank you, mahalo. Thank you for testifying. Next up is Loki Han. Actually, uh, next up uh, is um, Loela Opuulani Albino. Go ahead when you're ready. Aloha mai kako. Wau o ulani albino no moa ka ia o kamakou ko o moku o pane ene e ko o pali o mo umi ko o pukai. Aloha mai kako. I am Luelo o ulani Wallace albino. I have lived all my life in Ho'olihua, about two miles from Mo'omomi. My family have been pioneers in Ho'olihua in the early 1900s. Today, I am here before you to ask you to consider CBSFA as our plan for sustainability here and now and into the future. I was blessed with a brand new Mo'opuna Kuakahi, 12 great grandchildren, seventh generation of homesteaders here in Molokai. I have seen the demise of the resources of our place. My Kupuna warned me that if we were not to take care and give back, we will lose what we have. I remember when I could smell Lipo away before I went to Mo'omomi. That ended years ago. So whoever says nothing has changed or have been depleted is not being honest. And the connection to Mo'omomi is not sure or pili. We have seen 
the edges of the, the pop-up change. We have seen the, the, the beach and everything, even the currents change from what it was before to what it is now. We live in a time where we have no control over some elements. We are in a COVID condition today. What's going to ensure us and our children when food has already run out on most of the islands, the barge has increased to, to percentages that we, we're not gonna be able to even afford here on Molokai. Our subsist, subsistence depends on our ipukai. Mo'omomi is our ipukai. Please support the plan. And if you're not sure of what it is, please come and see us. Let's get together. This is how we're gonna to come together. Our future, our mo'opuna depend on this, please come forth and be a part of the plan because there is no other plan that will work for Mo'omomi or us as a people. Mahalo nui loa, ya kupu me mako, pakaya pao, aloha. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Loki Han. Makoko, aloha kako, ovau aloke han, kawahine a Lambert Kalani kui komoku han, anoho vau ma hoolehu a Molokai. I am a fifth generation homesteader. I live on the same hill that my kupuna lived on when they first came to Molokai. And uh, Molokai is my home. I want to protect my home. I believe that the CBSFA agreement for Mo'omomi is one thing that we can do as a community to help protect our Molokai home. We have knowledgeable fishermen in our family, in my husband's family, yeah? These men who oppose supporting the CBSFA because their whole lives, they have lived off what Mo'omomi has to offer. And maybe at one time, there was more than enough for everybody to fill up their kula and still have, but those times are changing. We all see that from Hawaii to Kauai. It's not like it was before. Things are changing. Our society is changing. Not everyone who goes to Mo'omomi Mo grew up with the ike kuuna of malama hunua that many of our kupuna have. Some people cannot even respect those traditional norms that many of us grew up learning at the knees of our parents and our grandparents, our aunties and our uncles. They just don't know because they were not taught that way. To malama, honua kai. No. We see it today. Novice fishermen, even some seasoned fishermen, some weekend warriors, yeah, commercial fishermen coming in. They all go down to fill up their kula. And some may follow traditional protocol, but many don't. And we see this. As homesteaders in Ho'olihua, we see this firsthand. This plan, the CBSFA plan, community-based subsistence fishing, yeah, for Mo'omomi will hopefully ensure that all who go down to Mo'omomi to feed their families will follow the same practice of taking what you need when the season is pono and not for commercial gain, not for financial gain, not for rake and fill up your kula, just because nobody gonna tell you any different. We as a community need to sustain our own resources and not let somebody else come in and tell us, oh, no can. Mahalo for this uh, opportunity to share with you. I support CBSFA, my Ohana support CBSFA, mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Anella Florendo. Aloha, everyone. Am I on yet? Yep, you're on and loud and clear. Okay. Aloha. Aloha no. My name is Anella Vahine Ui Kui Kalani Albino, born and raised, fifth generation in Ho'olehua, homesteader. 
Um, I, I currently sit as the president of Hui Malamu or Mo'omomi. And I, I come from the Ohana Maka'ibi. It is my utmost concern that I write this letter in support. Sorry, I'm gonna write, I read my letter. In support of the, the CBSFA on Moloka'i in the areas of Ilio to Nihoa, main focus, Mo'omomi. Sorry. Kalamai. I am a fisherwoman. I have fished in, in various ways. I have dived, went with my brothers, hiked along the coastline from Hina Ulua to Ilio Point. I have gathered, helped in, assisted my brothers in throwing net, dived in various places for the past 30 years, gathered from the rocks, Opihi, Limu, you name it, we did it. We weren't fortunate, we didn't have boats. We weren't able to lay net. We hiked, we hiked four miles coastline to gather whatever resources our family needed to eat. I've had a chance to work alongside some of the kupuna that has studied the movement and seasons, reproduction and hatching of the marine life and habitat. It's one thing to go to the beach and gather and a whole nother process to walk the dunes of Mo'omomi to study the rhythms and ecosystem. You see things through different eyes. I can honestly say that growing up in Ho'olehu and actually having the knowledge that I do of how things were 30 years ago compared to how it is today, there's a, there is a drastic change in marine life and habitat. There are many fishing holes that we would visit to gather moi, a hole hole, and different fish to eat just for the table that now, today, lie empty. Commercial fishermen have been seen raking and pillaging our reefs, lobster and uhu, and broadcasting it over social media. It's a shame. With the circumstances that we're facing today, with more than ever before, our resources are very important to Malama. With COVID, the threat of imported goods to Moloka'i being shut down and other factors that cause a huge impact on our stability to our food from the ocean and the land. Our sources, we must take precautions and Malama, what we have for us now and into the future and generations to come. Our ancestors had a system that worked that help to regulate and manage the resources we have so we can enjoy it today. Without proper management set in place now, our resources will definitely continue to deplete and be impacted. Therefore, I support the CBSFA for Mo'omomi Coast, the coast on Moloka'i. I, I sit here in representation of my kupuna that have passed before the kupua that still remain there on, in the caves alongside the, the coastline. And- Summarize. Yes, the kupua, mo'omomi, the mo'olelo and the, 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 the stories that were told to us growing up, we actually were able to see firsthand. You know, mo'omomi was actually a kupua. She was a living wahine mo'o that lived there that provided medicine for the people that once lived in Mo'omomi. And she is a protector of the, the resources that we have there. He ali'i ka'aina, he kawa ke kanaka. If you could summarize and wrap up for Thank you. Last a few minutes. So yeah, he ali'i ka'aina, he kawa ke kanaka. The land is king and man is its servant. So I stand in support of the CBSFA. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Janella Florendo. Actually, up next is Noah Emmett Aluli. Hello, Kako. Um, 
I strongly support the um, CBSFA. Um, and, and part of the history that I want to just tell you is, is that I'm born Punchbo, Honolulu, raised Kailua within my extended family on the canal, the Kawainui Canal. I was fortunate enough to spend the summers in Punalu'u and uh, Napili Bay. And um, fishing was much the part of my father and his brother's lives. Um, I am uh, um, 43 years of family medicine practice on Molokai, uh, a medical executive director at the Molokai General Hospital. Um, I'm part of the first class of the Johnny Burns School of Medicine, um, 1975. As a fourth year medical student, we had to spend time in a rural area. And, and my choice was to come to Molokai. Um, rural health has been my specialty. Um, I came because I was more interested in, in how the Hawaiians on Molokai were perceiving their health conditions and caring for themselves and their generations to follow. I also was very interested in the Hawaiian Homes Program as my grandfather, Noah Webster Luli, an attorney was one of the authors of the Homestead Act and was one of the um, folks that uh, sent Molokai people to Washington DC to lobby for the um, Water um, Restoration Act. Um, my grandfather was well into the wellness and well-being and, um, and the non-disappearance of Native Hawaiians. So that was part of the legacy. I just wanted to see how I could continue some of this work. Um, when I was here as the um, medical student, Julia Law was formed, um, a group that was accessing the shorelands for gathering purposes. Uh, the first um, march was from Momi to the Bakio Iki, and then from Palau to Haleolono, all homestead lands. Um, as a surgical resident, I decided that uh, after my year um, of um, a rotation uh, that I wanted to come back to Molokai and learn from the uh, people of Molokai on health. At that time, I was part of the Kotlave 9 that occupied Kotlave. And uh, long story short, the Kotlave is now uh, preserved, um, not for commercial use. Um, in the work with the Proteco Oilave uh, Ohana, we were able to set up the uh, Kohlavi Island Reserve Commission and we um, manage uh, the two mile out from the shoreline around the entire island. Um, and this is gonna be the first lands uh, once the um, A Nation was recognized um, uh, by the federal and state government. But along the way, uh, I've learned very much from the fishermen of the different islands and from the different areas, especially who gathered on Port Lovey. And the You're able really to know, summarize and wrap up for us. Okay, the fishermen really know, they really know what, what, what Malama is. And my heart study and my kind of like diet study has certainly proven that it's very important to subsist with the resources you have in your backyard. And um, hopefully um, we will be kind of like able to kind of do the same, especially as we move forward and need to depend upon our own resources and our own islands. Mahalo. Thank you. Can you state your name for the record? Noah Emmett Aluli. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Janella Florendo. Okay, we'll, we'll go to the next person on the list, Butch Haas. Butch Haas, are you online? All right. Aloha. Aloha. So Danelle's not here, I guess. So I'm Butch Haas and I'll go next. Okay, thank you. All right. So Aloha Kako, my name is Butch Haas. I am the executive director for the Molokai Land Trust. I live in the Kavela Ahupua'a on the island of Molokai. 
And I'd just like to state that the Molokai Land Trust is also a partner of the CBSFA, and we're located on the northwest coast of Molokai in the Kuluikoi Aupua'a. I'm testifying in support of the rules as posted and circulated to establish the Mo'omomi Northwest Coast of Molokai Community Based Subsistence Fishing Area, CBSFA. I support forwarding these rules to the Board of Land and Natural Resources for approval. I agree that commercial fishing from Ilio Point to Nihoa and out one mile needs to be limited. As a land manager on the Northwest Coast, I personally witnessed the boats coming from off island and conducting fishing activities in our nearshore waters especially off the Mokio Preserve. I support the proposed bag limits and regulations as necessary and essential to protect the marine resources that support the Ho'olehua Hawaiian homesteaders' subsistence and cultural resources and way of life. I'd like to mention that the Ho'olehua area is our neighbor, and so we really utilize uh, their support for our resource management and they participate in our subsistence um, past system for hunting and fishing on a regular basis. <clears throat> Many of our Ho'olehua and island community members participated in the development of the CBSFA back in the early 1990s. This is a local community-based system that utilizes local knowledge to oversee management of the resources that our community depends on. For myself, the Mokio lands comprising 1,769 acres, which I help manage, lie along five miles of the shore shoreline located within the proposed CBSFA designation. These lands lie between the Nature Conservancy's Mo'omomi Preserve and the state of Hawaii's Ilio Point lands. This shoreline area is hard to access due to steep cliffs and a dangerous shoreline during the winter months when surf is high. As such, the resources of Mokio have remained in relatively good shape, but this is due to limits on harvesting year round. Traditional seasons for harvest and local management allowed for sustainable resources in ancient times. And we need to remember that sound management of our current resources is the only way to ensure that they will remain sustainable and abundant for our future generations. The proposed rules are based upon data that's been collected for the past 25 years using traditional Native Hawaiian methods of observation and monitoring. The Mo'omomi Northwest Coast of Molokai CBSFA proposal and management plan contains the data for the vulnerable species, lobster, uhu, Kumu, Kole, and Moi, and are presented on pages 45 to 52 within that plan. I would ask that DARA have those who deny that these species are threatened provide their data, such as uh, Uncle Mac has done, so that they, there's a forms of basis for these claims. We continue to have aloha and respect for our neighbors because we realize that we all want what is best for our community. And in that sense, I'd like to say mahalo and Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Mahina Poipoi. See you're online, Mahina Poipoi, uh, but still on mute. Okay, you're still on mute. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yep, loud and clear. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Mahina Poi Poi. I am testifying in full support of the Mo'omomi CBSFA as proposed. I am a resident of Molokai. Um, our ancestors were ruthless and meticulous resource managers so much so that breaking the law or taking when you're not supposed to take was punishable by death. And this was an acceptable punishment. Um, the no rules, don't tell me what to do mentality is I suspect an entitlement and a result of colonization. A commercial harvest is not a gathering right. Traditional gathering requires it be done in a manner that allows for resource regeneration, um, which is exactly what this proposal does. If anyone is feeling like the limited taking of the five threatened species imperils their ability to feed their family, if you harvest more out of a desire than a need, I would say that this is more so practicing preference and not subsistence. Like, do you actually need the third, fourth, fifth uhu? Like, is your survival dependent on it? 
um, or can you supplement that with an Inoue or Kala and still eat good? The answer is yes. Um, subsistence is a necessity, it's survival, and ensuring these needs are met is a focal point abundantly evidenced throughout this proposal. Um, you're still allowed to take the, uh, a managed amount of the five threatened species, and there are numerous other species with plentiful populations available to harvest, such as Eninui, Manini, Palani, Kala, Beke, Aholehole. Um, this ensures the gathering from a diverse range of species is always available to feed families big and small. If you widen the lens and look at the planet, um, societies, economies, ecosystems are literally collapsing around us. Climate change, sea level rise, acidified oceans, toxic atmospheres of pl plastics dumped in the ocean, military war games, plummeting biodiversity, bleaching coral, smothered coral, and now a raging virus with no cure. Um, this is the reality of what we're destined to leave behind as it stands now. As humans, we've strayed so far from the reciprocative nature of our relationship with nature. Um, and when we fail to give back what we take, it becomes a parasitic relationship. Humans are the most intelligent, capable species to ever exist. And also, interestingly, the only species that as it stands now is knowingly choosing to cause its own extinction. So um, in closing, where I find the most hope to turn things around is in these community-led, indigenous-led, small-scale efforts that are occurring around the world and being quilted together to create this fabric of change. Um, and this proposal gives us and the next generation a fighting chance to see that change. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Robin Newbold. And Robin, you're online, but you're still on mute. Yeah, how's that? Loud and clear. Okay, <clears throat> aloha. I'm Robin Newbold, the co-founder and chair of the Maui Nui Marine Resource Council a nonprofit organization working for healthy coral reefs, clean ocean water, and an abundance of native fish for Maui Nui. I'm testifying today on behalf of our board of directors to convey our council's strong support of establishing the Mo'omomi community-based subsistence fishing area rules on Molokai. We believe that a culturally rooted community-based approach to management of near shore ocean resources will benefit both the coastal marine environment and the ohana of the Ho'olehua homestead and the surrounding areas. During this time of COVID-19, when food self-sufficiency is more important than ever for the people living on Molokai, we thank you for supporting this meaningful step to simultaneously protect the coastal resources of Molokai and provide for community-managed subsistence fishing. Please approve the proposal to establish Mo'omomi's community-based subsistence fishing area, the CBSFA rules. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next is Lori Buchanan. Aloha. Um, Co-host has asked you to start your video. Okay, hang on a second. Hello, I'm Brian, um, and Department of Land and Natural Resources, Division of Aquatic Resources. Um, my name is Laurie Buchanan. Um, I was born and raised and currently reside on the island of Molokai. Um, I have eight children and 21 grandchildren. I wanted to give thanks right now to Hui Malama o Mo'umomi, um, Konihiki Mat Koipoi, um, because all of my um, children benefited um, by the many years of um, mentorship and guidance um, as responsible of, of, by the Hui Malama Omo Omomi and um, Mac Poi Poi. So I wanted to give them thanks right up in the front. Um, I am in full support 
of the CBSFA um, proposed rules. Um, many, many years of observation and recognition has occurred and it lays the foundation for the proposed rules. I've read the rules. Um, I found them to be reasonable and fair um, and very much needed. And I'm not gonna go into, because there's not enough time to say why we are here in 2020. I have made many personal observation of um, fisher people fishing um, in unsustainable ways throughout my life here. Um, and I think it's just time because the knowledge maybe hasn't um, passed down to the generations as well as we would like them to. And being a Pono fisherman um, is really what we want to help encourage. Um, I'm, I'm sad the Department of Land and Natural Resources took so long to um, help us in empowering my community um, to take care of their own fishery. And I clearly know that that's what these proposed rules do. They empower my community. They don't take away from my community. Um, recently, in the past recent years, um, many fishermen of the North Shore of Molokai have been become very frustrated and in East Molokai, actually all over, and try to take uh, management into their own hands and it's not worked well for us. And so I think if we work in partnership with the department on um, instituting the CBSFA rules, then we will all be better for it. And if they're not, I'll be the first one to say so. Um, I also wanted to point out that the state ocean resource management plan um, clearly says to support this type of endeavors throughout the state. And that has been on the books forever and ever. So thank you very much. I know at the end of my time, but thank you for having um, finally coming to fruition. I appreciate it. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is La'a Poi Poi. Um, not seeing La A Poi Poi up, so we'll go to the next person on the list, Kiani Rollins. Uh, also not seeing Kiani Rollins, uh, we can circle back and we'll go to Kanaho Vai Luku. Okay, not seeing. Okay. Kanoho by Loku, are you on? La'a Poi Poi is here. Okay, we have La'a Poi Poi. Um, so we'll go back to La'a Poi Poi for your testimony. And you're on mute right now. Uh, looks like. La'a Poi Poi, are you still on? Um, okay. okay. Yeah, go on the first one. Huh? We hear you, please on, huh? proceed. Yeah. Bye. 
Uh, uh, Poi, Poi. Yeah, you're on. We can hear you loud and clear. Keone Rollins, are you on? Oh, there she is. Keone Rollins. Right Keone Rollins, uh, please go ahead with your testimony. Looks like you're on mute. Still on mute. Walter Riddy, I can see you're online, you're still on mute, but please go ahead with your testimony when you're ready. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead, Walter Riddy, whenever you're ready, uh, but you're still on mute. Hello. Hello, we can hear you loud and clear. Am I, I can't hear anything. <laughs> can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you if you want to proceed with your testimony. Okay. Um, we can hear you loud and clear. First of all, I wanted to um, try to get to the board members how important um, this whole effort is. It's not a last minute. Um, fly-by-night effort. Proceed with your testimony. It's an effort that started 26 years ago, and it's an effort that the governor of the state of Hawaii and the head of DLNR got together with the people of Molokai and began this 26-year effort to try and figure out how DLNR and the community um, can share and come together in order to solve many of the problems that DLNR had in management of the natural resources. So we're hearing your YouTube is still on in the background. If you can turn off the YouTube or, or mute it in the background, we're getting some echo. To try and figure out how DLNR and the community um, can share and come together in order to solve many of the problems. Anyway, um, I wanted to say that today is even more important because of, because of climate change, the pandemic, food security problems we have, and how DLNR is not really getting any funding. Um, that's coming from the legislature. So the only way we're gonna solve our problems as people and as, as a government is to join forces and have some kind of a partnership. And that's what this is all about. It's about a partnership anyway, um, between the community that, and DLNR. So even more important because, because of climate change, um, pandemic, security problems we have. I'm, I'm here to, to support this whole effort. And <clears throat> I wanna make sure that somehow the community and DLNR work together in trying to manage our future um, use of the ocean. So I wanted to thank everybody that's been participating and supporting this effort. And I want to ensure the Board of uh, the Department of Land and Natural Resources that this idea is long overdue 
and it's something that we're going to need in order for us to get through this pandemic and to solve our um, food security problems in the state of Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Kanoho Vailuku, if you're able to join us. If you could state your name for the record and please go ahead with your testimony. Okay. Uh, aloha, my name is Kanoho Wailukuhel. I'm born and raised on this island of Molokai and uh, I'm a resident in the whole area, Mahama and Homesteader. Um, testifying today in support of the CBSFA. Uh, I've worked for many years uh, along with Uncle McCoy Poi down in Mo'omomi. When we first started, uh, she, this is uh, over 20 years ago. Um, uh, we went right into the ocean, right, right to work, uh, as far as doing uh, studies and collecting data. Um, over the years, uh, you know, I've seen uh, kids who attended our programs during the summer. I've seen when they, they are all grown men now. They have families of themselves. Um, over the years, I've seen the rerouting of the Mo'omomi Road and uh, Today, I see a much cleaner ocean. I've seen um, replanting uh, native vegetation in the Mo'omomi area. Um, I've seen plants that were uh, very much on a decline. Uh, today, they are very abundant. Uh, when the rains come, they all come out, they're very abundant. Um, I've seen uh, ancient art uh, artifacts that belonged in the area uh, that was over in the mainland, over in the Bishop Museum. I've seen it come back and return back to Momomi where it rightfully belongs. Um, I've seen, you know, families uh, grow up and, 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 uh, um, and learn, you know, through the process. I've seen buildings uh, rebuilt, uh, or pavilions rebuilt for the good of our community, painted. And I've seen water, you know, down in our, uh, uh, in our area being run so that families can go down and can enjoy. Um, I see people uh, who go down to Momomi and uh, love and enjoy the area. I'm grateful to have been a part of that. Um, to wrap up my testimony, I, I'd like to say this. In the near future, when the CBSFA is passed, I see an increase of our Moi population. I see an increase of our Kole population. I see an increase of our lobster population. I see an increase of our Opihi population. I see an increase of our Uhu population. Um, so I hope and I pray for the best. And like I say, I see good things in the future and I see communities coming together, talking story and continuing to help to manage this area. Uh, aloha and mahalo for this time to share. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Ricky Cook. <laughs> Go ahead and state your name and um, please um, move forward with your testimony. Thank you. Yes, my name is my name is Ricky Cook. I live on uh, I live on Molokai, just in Kauluai, just above Kuala Pu'u. Uh, I'm a photographer. I've known Mo'omomi and this shoreline all my life. Uh, it used to be part of Molokai Ranch. I remember as a child going there with my father diving along the shoreline at Mo'omomi. Years ago, I helped, I helped uh, TNC. Um, I'm, I'm the island trustee for, uh, for, T, for Nature Conservancy. 
I helped raise the monies to purchase Mo Momi, as, and now it's a preserve. Uh, since then, Molokai Land Trust, I'm the president of Molokai Land Trust. Uh, uh, we have a preserve at Mokio, which covers five miles of the same uh, shoreline. We're, we and Nature Conservancy are both partners with, uh, uh, with the CBFSA. Mac Poipoi has helped us to manage our land, our shoreline and, and helped to advise us. We support subsistence fishing now. We have a pass system. We uh, report what, we manage it in a way that is sustainable. This is one of the most remote and pristine shorelines in Hawaii. The, the CBSFA will manage this rich area for the future. I have seen commercial fishing boats from Honolulu in the waters and chased off by locals. I have seen uh, local, you know, laid nets bringing in 150 lobsters in one morning. This is not good management. This shoreline is best managed with the with the collaboration with the CBSFA. It it was in effect for it's been about 12 years trying to reinitiate it. For about a 10 year period, Mac. Uh, ran it and it was a tremendous success. The fish and the habitat really came back during that period. So Molokai Land Trust, Nature Conservancy are partners in support. I also am supporting CBSFA um, as this is the best care for this area and in the, into the future. Uh, thank you and mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Kalani Han. We hear you loud and clear. Um, please state your name and proceed with your, with your testimony. Okay, Kalani Han, um, fourth generation Hulu Homestera from Ho'olihua. And I'm here, lifelong uh, user of Momomi. Um, 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 and I'm here to support CBS FA. I'd like to say, I'm told I'm talking directly to the people who is in charge of uh, approving this um, proposal. I'd like to say to you folks, stop fooling around and get, get this thing, um, yeah? Stop, stop uh, um, I mean, making, I mean, if you go outside here right now, there's a opposition outside, um, you know, and the information they get is a lot of uh, misconceptions and uh, and uh, stuff that uh, I think you guys can clear up. But what I'm here to say is I support C CBS FA 100%. I think it's about the future. And, you know, you guys get the call, make that call. Yeah. Approve this uh, this legislation that uh, our people has been working for all these years. Yeah. Um, and I I like to uh, I like to say that this is the right thing to do. It's uh, simple, simple as. Uh, and you guys know that too, yeah. Um, I like just say, stop fooling around already. Get this thing passed, so everybody can unify everybody. Yeah, unify this uh, community on this island. Yeah, you go. You guys know what is right. Stop fooling around. Get this thing over. With. Um, okay. So that's all I have to say now. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is La'a Poipoi. 
We see you online. Uh, you're still on. There we go. Okay, I need to get this out of the way. I can hear you, La'a. You wanna okay. go ahead and say your name and proceed with your testimony. La'a Poi Poi, fisherman of Momoni, um, educated and trained in Lavaia practices in the Momomi fishery. Um, but what I wanted to relate to, um, to the, the, the rules is that I took it upon myself to apply exist are the proposed CBSFA rules to my personal gathering and take limit starting from the the proposal of the rules in 2017 even prior to that and upon kind of doing backtracking figured out that I've been actually fishing according <clears throat> according to those rules <clears throat> At least five years prior, when I shot, or well, I gathered my last blue uhu. So the conclusions of of my my informal study as to whether or not the if I apply the rules to myself, whether or not I would be willing to apply it to the rest of everybody in in the community, the island, the state, Hawaii. I mean that I found that you would have to actually try fairly consciously to, to get to where it would incur a violation and be able to still feed yourself. So I'm fairly confident that it's the, that my 12-7 constitutional native Hawaiian gathering rights are being protected and reaffirmed through the, the rules that I propose. So, I mean, if you wanted to take more than the rules propose, I think it's, it's gonna be kind of greedy. So I wanted to also kind of frame the take as, as I, instead of giving up, uh, whatever you think the rules are. Um, see it as every fish you don't take, like you only, we still only taking from the from the ocean. Like the, the least you can do is give back. And one of the ways to give back, the simple, a simple way to give back is by not taking. And see that one fish extra that you never take as your donation to the future. So, and we need to cut, also need to keep the fish in the in the system because it's a contributor to the ecosystem it's not just food it's food for other consumers and you know so uh, thank you thank you for your testimony i'm in next. support okay got it thank you uh next up is kiani rollins and you're on mute, but we can see you. Okay, you're off mute now. Hello, this is Kiani. I'm, tr I'm swapping spots with my mom because she is scheduled to testify at 9 p.m. tonight. Um, and so I, I was scheduled earlier, so I, I don't want her to stay up too late. So this is my mom. Nico Wale. Mm -hmm. Aloha and mahalo for this opportunity to testify. My name is Liko Wallace and I am in strong support of the proposed DAR rules without amendments and urge DAR to request the BLNR move forward on the chapter 91 rulemaking process. I am 59 years old and I am a Ho'olihua homesteader. I was born and raised here on Molokai and chose to raise my family here. And this is where I will eventually take my final breath. 
Both of my parents were raised on Molokai. They were married a young, at a young age and money was tight. Luckily, we were blessed with the resources that Molokai provided us with, such as deer, fish, and just about every kind of sea animal my dad would provide us with. My dad, August Rollins Jr., loved to fish more than anything. And in my teenage years, he gave up working as a lifeguard at the county swimming pool to become a full-time fisherman. Through the years that he was a commercial fisherman, I don't remember much talk about how to properly gather our resources or about the life cycle of the delicious food gathered from the ocean that we were so privileged to enjoy. I knew there were seasons for certain marine animals and what months we were allowed to catch them, but nothing about the important stuff we really should have been taught so we could keep our ice boxes full for generations to come. I am in strong support of the CBSFA because I know that the generations as far back as my dad was not educated about the importance of being good stewards of what our Lord has provided us with to feed our families and enjoy. Knowing the important and necessary information regarding the productive cycle of the species we love will help our kids and their kids come to know how important it is to malama our resources so that they can continue to eat and enjoy the delicious seafood we grew up eating. I mahalo those who had the foresight and dedication to monitor and collect the necessary data over the many years of the species that were being negatively affected and not only bringing it to our attention, but pursuing this type of protection of our resources for our future generations. Mahalo for this opportunity to testify. Speaking of future generations, Speaking of future generations this is my granddaughter, Kaikena Rollins Fernandez. Aloha, my name is Kai Kenna Ramesh Fernandez. I am nine years old. I attend Kuala Pua Elementary School. Lobster is one of my favorite things to eat. I hope that we will still have lobster in our ocean when I grow up. I also hope that one day my, my children will get to eat lobster. That is why the Mo'omomi CBSFA is a good thing. I support the CBSFA. Please pass the proposed rules. Mahal. Thank you for testifying tonight. <laughs> Mahalo. Aloha. 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 Next up is Terrence George. <laughs> Aloha. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Please state your name and your testimony. Aloha, my kako. My name is Terry George, and I am president and CEO of the Harold K.L. Castle Foundation based in Mauna Wili in Kailua Ahupua and Oahu. Um, I am proud to stand with Kaikena and many of the others who have testified in strong support of the establishment of the Mo'omomi CBSFA. Uh, but there have been some questions, so I thought I'd answer them about what's the Harold Castle Foundation? Where do we get and use our money? Why do we care about this proposal? And what has been our role in this process? We are a private nonprofit grant making foundation created in 1962 by Harold Kainalu Long Castle, the owner of Kaneohe Ranch. And our funds come solely from gifts from Mr. Castle, gifts of land and stocks and bonds that we turn around and use to make grants. The foundation's volunteer board members, having personally seen the decline in the health of our nearshore resources over the 50 years that they've been fishing and diving in the islands, in 2003 made a commitment to help restore our nearshore fisheries. We believe that the best way to do that is to support longtime fishing families and other community leaders in taking the lead to propose to the state of Hawaii ways to better manage those nearshore fisheries that they know better than anybody else. That's why we also testified to support similar rules, rules processes for Haena on Kauai and Kaupulehu on Hawaii Island. And guess what? There's indisputable evidence that both of those communities now enjoy greater fish abundance. The only direct grant we've made in support of this process for the Mo'omomi CBSFA was a $22,000 grant made to DLNR by our foundation in 2017 to help 
create a baseline ecological data set for the North Shore of Molokai. Well, we have provided indirect support. Specifically, we are proud funders of KUA, a network of community-based nearshore ocean resiliency groups throughout Hawaii. Our funds have helped these community leaders meet with each other and share strategies. Every grant that we make is listed on our website, so please check it out at www.castlefoundation.org. Now something about these proposed rules for the Mo'omomi CBSFA. Do they say you cannot fish? No. Nope. You can still take two uhu a day for nine months of the year, for example. Do the rules say you won't have access? No, except for a small area. Do they say people cannot practice their culture? No, just the opposite. Did outsiders propose the rules in the first place? No. This is part of some big conspiracy that some people have mentioned. Absolutely not. In closing, I believe that if we all work together, we can ensure that our grandchildren's grandchildren can enjoy the bounty of our fisheries and can continue our island way of life that's so essential to the health of our communities. So the only goal of the Harold K. Alcasa Foundation in this work is this, more fish for future generations to enjoy. Let's make sure that there's lobsters for Ka'ikena's children and grandchildren uh, at the appropriate time. Mahalo for the opportunity to testify. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Eric Koh. I see you're online and on mute. Um, there you are. Uh, please can go ahead. Me? Yep, I can hear you. Go ahead and state your name and provide your testimony. Thank you. Aloha, my name is Eric Cole. I am a resident of Molokai, and I work for the Harold K. Alcasa Foundation with Terry, which as you mentioned, is a charity committed to ocean sustainability. Both personally and professionally, I support this rules package from Omomi, and this is why. I think the opportunity for this community to be empowered to care for its resources in the way it wants to care for them is a good thing. For me, this is not about choosing sides or ever wanting to be divisive. It's about supporting the chance for fishing values and practices on Molokai to become aligned with the law, to protect them, not infringe on them. While there have been several on-island opportunities for people to inform what the rules should be for Momomi, there are some who still feel they haven't had the chance or voice in this process. If this designation should pass, I would look to continued community meetings so that everyone can feel heard and keep providing input. My hope is that this offers a means for ongoing and improved planning of a living document and an evolving set of rules that can help people overcome any of their differences and better serve this community but this needs to be by the community and for the community. So to be clear, I nor anyone from the Castle Foundation wants to be on the management team, wants to govern this in any way or derive any benefit from this. As Terry mentioned, the only thing we want is to preserve the health and traditions of this place for Molokai people. Especially in this time of COVID and more storms that frankly have been too close for comfort for me I think we all recognize now more than ever how reliant we are on our natural resources. This is an important moment to consider how we'll ensure their sustainability now and for, for future generations. In these times of increasing uncertainty, I believe a Mo'omomi CBSFA can help ensure this community can feed itself no matter what may come. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Maureen Dada. Maureen, you're online. Uh, please speak if, if you can hear me. Uh, we're not hearing anything from you, uh, Maureen. Maybe we'll move to the next testifier on the list while we figure out those technical difficulties. Candice Fuchikane. Oh, actually, Maureen just came came on. So please um, go ahead, Maureen, if you're ready to provide your testimony. Uh, looks like we can't hear you still, though. So 
something going on with the audio. So maybe we will go ahead with Candice Fujikane um, while Ma Maureen figures out her audio. Can you hear me now? Oh, there yep, we go. Now, now we can hear you, I, if that's Maureen. <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm Maureen Dada. I live in South Kona. And um, I just wanted to express my support for this project. I think it's important to honor indigenous knowledge and to trust that the people who live in place know best. And I've seen it be effective here in Ka'upulehu and I'd like to see this happen from Molokai as well. Thank you, aloha. Thank you, Okay, next up we'll go to Candice Fujikane. Aloha mai kako. My name is Candice Fujikane, and I'm an English professor at the University of Hawaii. I teach classes on the Mo'olelo of Hawaii that are based on Ike Kupuna, or ancestral knowledges about cultivating abundance. Um, and I strongly support the designation um, for Mo'omomi as a community-based subsistence fishing area. It's easy to point to problems in the state's current system of caring for lands and waters in Hawaii, but the CB, um, CBSFA for Mo'omomi is a win-win situation for the state and for local communities. It recognizes the importance of local management of areas that residents know how to protect precisely because they depend on caring for those areas to feed themselves. I love listening to Uncle Mac Poi Poi talking about what true abundance means. True abundance means there are so many fish that you don't have to count them and there are multiple generations of fish in the water, a ama in all stages from the pua ama to the anai. Now more than ever, as we are seeing changing weather patterns like the El Nino Modoki that moves into the central Pacific, decreases in rainfall, seasonal changes, we're also seeing changes in spawning patterns and fish behaviors. Community-based subsistence fishing areas enable local residents who monitor changes closely to identify customized rules for management that will regenerate fish populations. The rules they devised are based on generations of kilo, of close observation of the fish, the moon phases, the conditions of the shoreline, the wind, wave, and heat patterns by which they establish a baseline to identify anomalies. Mai na kupuna mai from the ancestors, Kanaka Maoli observe kapu based on indicators of spawning events. Uh, local communities like Moomomi and West Molokai are most skillful at identifying those changes and the rules they've devised set kapu on certain fish uh, populations in accordance with those observations. We know that when the fish are gone, they may not come back. And these rules are necessary to allow them to repopulate for communities that are most dependent on a diet of seafood. And um, I just wanted to say too that in, in my research, the work that I'm doing, um, the kinds of restorations we see happening at projects like Mo'omomi are so important in that they ripple out and that they have exponentially restorative um, effects for all of the islands in Hawaii, not just for Molokai. And it's also a mentality and a way of thinking that's very important to communicate to our children and to other people um, who fish and do these practices without having that kind of um, ancestral knowledge passed onto them. As many people have said before, um, they don't, people don't know um, what they're doing uh, is wrong. Uh, it's been 25 years since the original CBSFA law in 1994 was passed, and it's time to designate Mo'omomi as a CBSFA uh, with its proposed rules. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Amber Dada. You see, it looks like you're still on mute. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yeah, please state your name and provide your okay. testimony. Thank you. My name is Amber Dada. I'm here in support of the designation of the Mo'omomi CBSFA. 
I was born and raised in Honanao on the Big Island, and I am a swimmer and a diver. And while I'm not a fisher, I enjoy eating the fish caught by local fishers, and I have a deep respect for their knowledge and their cultural practices. I'm also a graduate student studying environmental governance with a focus on coral reefs. I therefore speak as a resident who cares deeply about Hawaii and as a student familiar with the value of community-based management. Community-based approaches to manage, managing marine resources are used to improve the health of ecosystems and communities across the Pacific from Solomon Islands to the Philippines. This approach is recognized for its ability to make use of local knowledge alongside science and for improving people's willingness to comply because the rules are recognized as appropriate for that place. Here in Hawaii, the Ha'ena and Ka'opulehu communities have illustrated that CBSFAs are a viable model for management. Collaboration between the state and communities provides an opportunity increase much needed capacity for fisheries management in Hawaii. In addition, this approach not only benefits the fisheries, but also strengthens the cultural practices and the use of place-based knowledge that has long guided fishing practices in Hawaii. It is of vital importance that the connection between rights to use resources and rights to malama these resources be reestablished across the state, and CBS days are a great way to forge this link. Who better to manage the resources of a place than those who live right next to them? The Mo'omomi community has been actively working to restore the abundance of their fisheries by caring for, studying, and managing the cultural and marine resources within the proposed area for the past 27 years. To set an example of what inclusive, locally-based marine management can look like in Hawaii, um, they're kind of the perfect example. It is the past time to recognize their efforts, so please go ahead and designate Mo'omomi as a CPSFA. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Manuel Mejia. Aloha, my name is Manuel Mejia. And as a concerned individual and ocean lover, uh, I'd like to express my support for the Mo'omomi CBSFA. I'm grateful to DAR for this safe opportunity to voice my strong support. I support for three main reasons. One, to honor the law that, was in, that has informed uh, by this community and to help see uh, DAR's mandate of um, the CBSFA law. Secondly, to protect the resources that we all depend on as an interdependent island society. And most importantly, for the overall well being of the people of Molokai and Hawaii. Uh, for over a quarter of a century now, since 1994, the community of Mo'omomi has been diligently pursuing that their traditional fisheries management traditions be recognized through five governors and administrations. This current DAR administration is their best shot at finally succeeding. Mo'omomi's leaders have meticulously dotted every I and crossed every T, jumped through hoops, held many public meetings, educated students, cleaned up marine debris, and outreached and engaged publicly to over 45,000 people over many years to vet these rules. They have done so carefully, patiently, and above all with integrity and aloha for all. The rules they developed openly and transparently in close consultation with fishers in their community do not take away rights, but rather enhance the community's ability to feed their families now and into the future. Globally, marine resources are in decline. It is no different in Mo'omomi. It is a classic case of the shifting baseline phenomenon. Relative to the, re the, the rest of the main Hawaiian islands, yes, the fish biomass is high. Um, and this is probably why the commercial operators want to fish there unchecked. But the truth is, if you ask the longtime residents who knew the former abundance, the resources in Mo'omomi have chronically been declining for several decades now. We think it is high, but according to the kupuna who know best, it is merely a shadow of what it once was and therefore needs action and malama. These rich resources in Mo'omomi also help seed the rest of the island as well as neighboring islands with fish, lobster, and coral larvae. If we drop the ball and let these resources decline, we all suffer. Lastly, and most importantly, the people of Molokai deserve to have agency over how to manage their coastline according to their traditional knowledge and practices, as is the intent of the CBSFA law. They have, in fact, been taking care of it, which is why the resources are still relatively healthy despite all the pressure. It would be an amazing game changer if the state designates and supports these rules for the community. Hand in hand, the state and the community can forge a new path forward sharing power and kuleana to keep this special place healthy and productive for generations to come. As an island society, the decision before us is clear. Either we care deeply or do nothing at all. We know that, nothing, we, we know that doing nothing will get us nothing. Worse, we will see the resources decline. 
or we can take action and support this community that is a bright spot and is showing us the way to reciprocate with nature so that nature can continue to take care of all of us. The road that the Mo'omomi community, um, the proponents of the CBSFA is taking is a high road and as such, it is a harder road to take. Like them, let us base our decisions and actions on courage, not fear, on strength and conviction and strong Hawaiian values and integrity such as malama and aloha rather than take the easy route of complacency, greed, and laziness. We want abundance and vibrant health for all, not poverty. We want transparency and accountability, not loss. The Ho'olehua community is and always will be a proud, strong, resilient, and self-sufficient and caring community. As a society, their future is our future. They need a strong partner in the state so that they can practice their kuleana and pull together to co-manage uh, and lead the way for Hawaii. As the oceans thrive, so do we. Mahalo for this opportunity. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Edwin Lindsay. Aloha. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you great. Okay, perfect. Aloha, this is uh, Edwin, also known as Ekolu Lindsay, representing Polonui Hue Community Managed Makai area. And I, my testimony is in strong support for Hui Malama or Mo'omome in their quest to establish a CBSFA. I use the term quest because they truly are on a quest. It has been a long time coming. They have 30 years of data to show beyond a reasonable doubt that they have some issues that needs to be dealt with. Now, the CBSFA established in 1994 under Hawaii Revised Statutes 188-22.6 for the purpose of reaffirming and protecting fishing practices customarily and traditionally exercised for purposes of native Hawaiian subsistence, culture, and religion. I can think of no better project. It's not a project, a way of life to support than what Uncle Mac and Hui Malamo Mo'omomi have done um, out there in Moloka'i. You know, and I look at inward at myself and growing up in Lahaina here and watching my grandfather fish for uh, whatever my grandmother put in. He would go out, gather. And I remember the sink as a young child in the 70s being full, just big fish, all different colors, never knew what was in there. But as I learned, and as I started to dive in the 80s, I recognized that things started to decline. Now, as things declined, we didn't know what to do. We, we relied on government to take care of things. Move all the way to the 2000s, in Polanui, our property in, in Lahaina on Front Street, we have the lowest fish biomass and diversity in the state. And this area was reserved for Ali'i, but unfortunately, due to the many problems that people have presented to the ocean and the disrespect we have for nature, we are not there. And it's a sad story that I do not want anybody else to tell. That's why I really support Uncle Mac and what he's done with the uh, Hui Malama Mo'omomi and the support they have given the community. They've done their due diligence. They have earned the right for this to go in front of the Board of Land and Natural Resources. And it is your kuleana, Brian, Mr. Nielsen, to send this up to the next level because this thing has been on the book since 1994. And we only have one out in Haena, that's it. Uncle Mac was there from the beginning. He deserves this right. And I would encourage you very strongly to support the efforts that they do. You know, there's a Hawaiian saying, the future can be found in the wisdom of the past. I'll say that one more time. The future can be found in the wisdom of the past. By looking in the past, we know where we're gonna go. Uncle Mac lived in the past. He is a man of integrity. He's a man that understands his resources. And he is a man who cares not just for his community, but for the resources and all living things. He is a true kupuna. We don't have true kupunas, many of them left. And I truly need to support him wholeheartedly in their efforts to establish that CBSFA. Mahalo, thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Next up, we have Aaron Boswell.
Hello, my name is Aaron Boswell. I'm a volleyball homesteader and I oppose the CBS. In the DLNR rulemaking, it states a community group interested in pursuing a CBSFA designation should first engage individuals who traditionally gather. The proposing community group is expected to be representative of the community's traditional subsistence practitioners. And while full support from all subsistence practitioners is not expecting, the group should have a larger base of support than opposition amongst this interest group at the very least. I can tell you that they know more than majority. This proposal was submitted by Hui Malama Omo Omomi and states that they represent the homestead community. In 1993, that was probably true. There were many members and they began the process, but that entity is not the same as today. They had to reorganize and I believe the latest one was 2013 and their membership is limited to only its board. The program, the pilot program drove a wedge through the community and caused a lot of conflict. As a result, the program was allowed to set. There are many subsistence homesteaders that are adamantly against this. And a lot of it has to do with how the initial project was run and managed. There are a lot of issues that are related to me that remain unresolved till today. This was expressed to DLNR in Oahu, and as such, your board decided to open it up to the entire state. I looked and I'm unable to see if Ahana's if Ahana's CBSF rulemaking included statewide input. I couldn't find anything that said that it did. You see, one of the first things we learned growing up is to stay in your ice box. I would never go tell a community such as Haena or Mililii how to manage their resources. It is sounding like we as locals do not already practice subsisting fishes, fishing here today when this is absolutely not true. True making affects mostly subsistence fishers from our area with things such as pass keys, surveys, and limited access. Those things are all mentioned in the CBSFA proposal. I don't have a problem with rules. I have a problem that the proposal does not represent the feelings of the majority of subsistence fishers from this area. Thank you. Uh, now we're gonna have my son, Jaren. Thank you for your testimony. Jaren Boswell, uh, you're up next. Yeah, hello, uh, my name is Jaren Boswell. And this is my Papa Samuel Makaevi. I'm a native Hawaiian homesteader and a subsistence gatherer for my family. I'm a sixth generation homesteader. I grew up growing kalo and making kololo as a child. But now as an adult, I rely heavily on subsistence gathering to feed not only my household, but that of my parents, uncles, aunties, and grandparents. While growing up, I was not taught to fish or hunt. Those responsibilities were left to my dad and uncle. Now that I'm an adult, those responsibilities lie with me. For a lot of my childhood, I heard stories of my Papa Sam and his knowledge of Momomi, how he would take my dad and uncle to go holo holo. But I wondered why he, he rarely went down together as I was a child. Now that, I am, now that I am an adult, I have the privilege of learning from my Papa who learned from his kupuna. I am not a commercial fisherman. I put food on my table as well as the tables of my ohana. I've never seen a commercial fisherman at Momomi. It pains me to see my papa and his cousins go head to head. I've seen this community meetings that involved yelling and name calling. It would be my desire to see this community heal first before any of this process moves forward. You guys talk about the next generation but all that we will be left with is resentment and hurt feelings. I was at a meeting when a DAR representative told us that Momomi had a lot of fish, more than that of any place in the state of Hawaii. Why don't we put this on the back burner, allow other places to proceed with this process? All I can think about is that we have a time. All that I can think about is that we have time, time to fix the hurt and resentment that exists. If this plan moves forward with neighbors fighting each other, all I fear is resentment. 
Oh, all I fear is that you are leaving my generation is contention and resentment. My heart aches because my community is hurting. I'm against CBSFA. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Next up, we have Cynthia. No, Cynthia. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, next up. Next up is Daviana McGregor. Okay, we're going to go to Tara Rojas next uh, while we're figuring out the technical difficulties. Aloha. Aloha, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay. So, Aloha, I'm Tara Rojas and I'm here on the island of Oahu. And I just wanted to give my, uh, my feedback, my opinion of what I've seen and what I've read and what I've learned about this Mo'omomi CBSFA. And so for me, um, and I think I can say for everyone who has either visited the island, whether just, you know, recently who have lived there for a while, and especially for those who are born and raised there, that Molokai is special. It's unlike any other island. Yeah, Molokai is not Kauai. And I know Kauai has, was the first one to have their uh, SPSFA approved. I know the other islands are also looking to have uh, the SBSFA, but again, Molokai is not Lanai, Molokai is not Oahu, Molokai is not Maui, and Molokai is not Hawaii Island. Molokai is Molokai. And what I see and what really, just really tears at my heart, even from an outsider, but with heart strings, you know, attached, and with being someone who has been awoken, you know, for a while and other uh, aloha aina, malama aina issues, and especially from last year with Mauna Kea, and being involved in as much as I can since having been awoken, you know, as a lahui to stand for the aina, and now standing for the kai. So I know it's part of the Governor Ige's plan to manage 30% of coastal shorelines, but what I see again is, I know on Molokai, I see kupuna. I know it boils down to ike kupuna and preserving that knowledge for the generation, for the people living now and the future generations. So I respect all kupuna, whether they're for or opposing, because the ike kupuna that they have and the connections that they have are generation. It's ancestral knowledge. And so what I feel in my heart is that Momomi is special and everyone there you know, has ancestral ties. Whether you're part of that, uh, that one organization or that the, you know, the people that are for it, that are proposing it, or those who are opposing. So again, uh, it is more than land water, it's, it's ohana. And so the community themselves you know, will be affected. And if there's a couple of things that I, I didn't hear mentioned, and this happened recently, was because Molokai is, Molokai is special, what just recently got approved was the PUC 46% rate increase. And it was stated that, you know, Molokai rural, rural locations will be hit harder. The cost will be passed on to consumers and the full path impact of the rate hike won't be uh, felt until September. So if people in Molokai are substance uh, gatherers, you know, fishers, how is this gonna impact? you all and what i see is really that really hurts is the legal consequences so if not all of the community is saying yeah let's do this now if the community now is you know fully 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 awoke as i saw in the proposal from 2013 to 2016 that um that's when the majority of the outreach was you know taking place why not start from now why not start from now have both sides of the community come together and then put into practice and together come to a compromise that will work for everyone. Because what you wanna do is heal, not hurt the community, not divide. And again, just really quickly, I wanna say this to, to end it up, 
mm-hmm. is what really is hard on my heart is the criminal criminal the, the penalties where it says the adoption of chapter 1360.9 Hawaii administrative rules shall take effect 10 days after filing with the office of the lieutenant governor so can you imagine having administrative penalties criminal penalties against kupuna against those who also have ike kupuna and ancestral ties so again, my heart just goes out to you know the Molokai community, and then I hope that you can come together before it's officially approved and DLNR and the state comes involved because once a law gets approved, you know how challenging it is to uh, to overcome that. So again, so if the two the community can come together and find a way that will work for them, yeah, then that's what I'm really hoping and praying that will happen in Molokai. So all my love and aloha to all you, um, all ohana amolokai, and much gracias. Thank you. For the record, would you like to state a position on I am a, a ole CBSFA. I hope that the community can come together. Yeah, now. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next up, we'll go to Daviana McGregor. Aloha Kako. <clears throat> I'm Daviana Pomekai McGregor. I I live here in Ho'olihua, in Hawaiian Homestead in Molokai. I'm also professor of ethnic studies at the University of Hawaii Manoa and director of the Center for Oral History. Um, I'm testifying in support of the rules that were posted and circulated to establish the Mo'omomi Northwest Coast of Molokai community-based subsistence fishing area. And I hope that they, I recommend that DAR uh, forward these rules for approval by the Board of Land and Natural Resources. I agree that commercial fishing from Ilio Point to Nihoa and out one mile needs to be limited. I support the proposed bag limits and regulations as necessary and essential to protect the marine resources that support Ho'olehua Hawaiian homesteaders, subsistence and cultural way of life. It was our Ho'olehua Hawaiian homestead community, not DLNR, that created the CBSA designation in 1993. Governor John Waihe'e's subsistence task force met with Molokai communities about the health of our resources for hunting, fishing, gathering, and farming. I was one of the UH researchers with John Matsuoka from social work and Luciana Munerbi from urban regional planning. We conducted focus groups, community meetings, and island-wide survey. The kupuna observed that the fish were not as big or as plentiful as when they grew up. They said we need to manage our near shore ocean in a Hawaiian pono way, stop the commercial sale, and reserve the icebox for subsistence only. Our Ho'olehua has the uh, community has ancestral knowledge and trust each other to monitor and manage our resources, but only DLNR can limit the commercial activities. So that's why it's important to co-manage. Our community is not giving away our rights to DLNR to manage. DLNR controls from the high water mark out to three miles. What we're doing is having DLNR acknowledge the community to be able to co-manage the resources within the one mile, we set the rules, we change the rules, we monitor. Um, Our our subsistence fishing is protected. This is a first step towards self-governance as Native Hawaiians. Um, And it's an ongoing process. So people who just found out or they maybe they didn't want to participate later, come on board, be part of it. As Uncle Max said in his testimony, come help us clean the beach, come help us monitor, come help Um, change the rules if they're necessary to change. The proposed rules are based on data that's been collected over 25 years using traditional Native Hawaiian methods of observation and monitoring. And I would refer the staff to the Mo'omomi proposal and management plan, the data for vulnerable species, the lobster, the uhu, the kumu, the kole, the moi are presented on pages 45 to 52. I would ask that Dar have Um, Those who deny that these species are threatened, 
can they please provide their data? Because our data shows these, these species are threatened. And you know, these species cannot wait for um, the rules to anymore. They need the rules to protect the resources. I, I can't tell, do I have more time? I, You're out of time, so if you could summarize and wrap up. Sorry, I was trying to figure out my, uh, sorry, Kalamai. So just in closing, I want to uh, quote from what was in the management plan, a translation of it. Rare indeed today are those people that are fishing who are really truly expert in this field. And it would be regrettable to us if this knowledge so patiently acquired by our ancestors should be lost. Let's not let our resources be threatened anymore. Let's adopt these rules now. Mahalo nui loa. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Luca Kanaka Ole. <clears throat> Aloha, I am Luka Kanaka Ole from Hilo, Hawaii, and I am providing testimony and strong support of the Mo'omo'emi Community Based Subsistence Fisheries Area. For generations and the history of Kanaka Oivi, Hawaii, people of this island was tied to the movements and the cyclical changes that is our natural resources. When the seasons changed, so did the plants and the animals, and therefore our people. Our kupuna were able to survive because they acknowledged the changes they observed. When it was time to plant, they planted. When it was time to eat fish, they fished. And when it was time to conserve, they conserved. Kapu is not some arbitrary practice put in place by a primitive culture. They were in place to ensure the continual perpetuation of food throughout the seasons and throughout the generations. When their observations, when their observations seen the kapu needed to be changed because of change in their resources or their environment, it was changed. Hundreds of years later, we find ourselves today in a severe disconnect from our aina. We lost our ability to observe our resources and govern them accordingly to the changes that we observe. We had surrendered ourselves to be able to gather from a dying resource without the burden of needing to malama or kapu. This is not specific to Mo'omomi, but an example of a fishery as a whole. Yes, as Kanaka, we have rights to access these resources, but the right to gather first demands the ability to practice kilo and implement and abide to kapu in which kilo experts of this place informs. I had the honor of observing and working with these Kia'i Aina experts from Uncle Presley of Ha'ena or Auntie Hannah of Ka'upulehu or of course, Uncle Mac Poipoi of Mo'omomi, attempting to reinstill these practices of kilo and kapu for years. They have not only proven that they intimately know the cycles of their place, but they also strategically implement kapu that can preserve the healthy production of the resource for generations to come. To me, CBSFA is a prime example of an ahamoku system evolving into our society today. Many have spent decades studying and fighting for this right to be able to self-govern their small but significant spaces. It will be dishonoring those kupuna who are intimate with these spaces if we do not live through their wisdom. To conclude, as Kanaka, through the hard work of small communities like Ha'ena, Ka'upalehu, and Mo'omomi, our right to become better kilo and to be better malama aina is being reinforced. This will hopefully become another step towards the CBSFA throughout all small Hawaiian communities. The health and conditions of our people and our resources depends on our traditional practices becoming the rule of law. These small communities will create a large impact that reverberate throughout the native Hawaiian generations. Mahalo nui loa. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Wali Ito. Hello, can you hear me? Yep, can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, I, I try to, I, I start a video, but I get an error message. You cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. But that's okay, I don't need to, uh, I don't need to have the video on. Um, aloha, my name is Wally Ito. Um, I'm, I am the Limuhui coordinator for Kua, Kua Aina Ulu Awamo, and I also act as a project manager for Evalimu Project. As Limuhui coordinator, I manage a hui of kupuna and makua, um, passionate about preserving Hawaiian cultural limu knowledge. And we also um, are supporting a growing interest in limu restoration efforts. 
In fact, one of those efforts may be starting up on Molokai pretty soon. Um, hopefully that goes through. Um, as project coordinator for Evolimu project, I work to continue Uncle Henry Chang, Chang Wo's efforts to advocate for and educate people about Imu. I am testifying in full support of the Mo'omomi CBSFA rules. And I am calling in from beautiful downtown Kalihi on Oahu. Um, this is where I grew up. Uh, I am a marine biologist. I earned a Bachelor of Science degree from Hawaii Pacific University in the summer of 2014. Um, I am also a longtime spear fisherman. I have been diving, diving since the age of eight. And um, if you know how old I am, that gives me almost 60 years of diving experience in our, in our uh, waters, mainly off of Oahu. Uh, so I'm testifying with the knowledge and skills of a marine biologist and a longtime spear fisherman. I still dive today. Uh, in fact, I went out this past um, Sunday. I was able to bring a couple fish home for dinner. Um, but the uh, ability to bring home fish um, has diminished over the years. Uh, spear fishing is not what it used to be. I remember a time uh, when my diving partner and I would, would um, bring along a 60 quart cooler and between the two of us, we had no trouble filling it up with uh, kumu, lobsters, ahole hole, abeo beo, menpachi, kole, papio, he'e, um, and these, these um, fish and um, um, lobster were the main target species for us. And this is all with just a three prong spear. We don't use a spear gun. Um, I witness a decline in initial fishery from a time of plenty to a current time of struggling to bring home dinner. During this time of plenty, you know, there was no Macboy Poi to warn us about overfishing. There was no Macboy Poi to tell us that unless we malama our fishery, the fish are going to start to disappear. This is a time when we had no thought or, or, or foresight that uh, what we were seeing at that time, the, the plentiful fish was um, going to um, disappear soon. Oh, sorry, I say got 30 seconds. Um, so um, the Mo'omomi, I'll, I'll go right to the end of my, my talk. The Mo'omomi CBSFA managed area is still a rich fishery, as rich as it is now, though it is not as rich as it was 25, 30 years ago. I think a lot of the Mo'omomi old timers can testify to that. Um, there have been arguments that you don't need rules because there's still plenty of fish. Um, but with my um, marine biology, ecology knowledge, the time to manage a fishery to ensure plenty for the next generations is to, is to manage it while, while there is, is still plenty. Um, to try to recover fishery uh, from, from a period, from a time of uh, depleted, depleted fishery is uh, uh, much more difficult to obtain. Yeah, um, I see I've gone past my time. So um, I'll, I'm a, a mahalo for the opportunity to test, testify 100% in support of Omomi CBSFA uh, rules. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Tamara Palton. Velina Maikako, can you hear me okay? Yep, loud and clear. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tamara Paltin and I um, work for the Maui County Council for representing West Maui. Um, prior to 2019, I was a lieutenant um, at DT Fleming's Beach Park for ocean safety. And um, I'm also the president of the Save Honolua Coalition. Um, back in 2009, we, we joined what is now called Ealupu. And that's when I first met Uncle Mac Poi Poi. And, um, you know, I've learned so much from him. My kids have learned so much from him. Um, our whole organization, our network has learned so much from him. And for us in our area of Honolulu, Mala, it's only a dream to have, um, be able to manage our own waters. Um, we, we daily see um, people night dive with scuba gear over harvesting. And, um, you know, there's, there's different ways people in our community want to go about it. But if, if we could have something like a community-based subsistence fishery area, 
because I know from, you know, two decades of working at the beach that DLNR, DAR, they can't do it for us. It's the community that has to be um, protecting of our own resources because, um, you know, not due to the, the limited budget and the politics of where the money goes and where the officers can go and they can't be everywhere at every place and every time. So, you know, I really would like to see the community empowered to take care of their own resources. And with everything that's going on, the 46% um, rate hike for young brothers, the pandemic, um, pretty much economic shutdowns, it's more important now than ever before that communities be able to uh, malama and take care of their own resources. And I heard before that there is division within the community and, and you know, it's my sincere hope that um, during these tough times that we can come together with a, with a shared goal to malama our resources, all of our resources. And, and so, you know, I just, give my full support for the CBSFA. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Aloha Lamho. Aloha Kako, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Okay. Aloha my Kako, my name is Kale Aloha Lamho and I currently reside in Manoa on the island of Oahu. And I am testifying today in strong support of the proposed CBSFA designation for Mo'omomi. Um, I spent a portion of my childhood growing up in Mauna Loa on the island of Moloka'i. And during that time, my parents relied on a subsistence lifestyle to feed our family. And I believe the regulations outlined in the proposed CBSFA are the community's best option to ensure resources are available for future generations. You know, we're living in uncertain times and our resources are finite and traditional subsistence practices are really critical to preserve our resources. Um, I also speak today as an educator. I currently serve as the director of the Hawaiian Center at Honolulu Community College. And I've had an active role in inspiring and training the next generation of Native Hawaiian uh, natural resource practitioners for the last 14 years. And last year we had the privilege of taking a group of students to Moloka'i to learn from Uncle Matt Poi Poi and the field trip was really life changing for this group of young men and it reinforced the value of Mo'omomi as a model for other communities. And one thing that the student shared that really resonated with them that Uncle Matt said to them was he told them that it's not about managing the natural resources, it's about managing the people. And if you look at the photo behind me in my virtual background, this is a picture of us at Kava'aloa Bay where we were really fortunate to huli kalima ilalo and be able to clean up some of the opala that had accumulated on the beach. And that simple activity really resonated with the students and helped internalize and connect to the message Uncle Matt gave them about managing people. Um, so in conclusion, hui malama, uh, hui malama o mo'omomi has been really successful in restoring, monitoring, and sustaining resources for many years. And I will be... I will be submitting a written testimony to reiterate my position, and I stand by that written testimony in full support of the proposed Mo'omomi CBSFA. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Charles Young. Can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Okay, great. Yeah, aloha and mahalo for this opportunity to speak in support of the Mo'omomi Community-Based Subsistence Fishing Area Proposal and Management Plan. My name is Charles Young and I reside in the Ahupua'a of Kealia, South Kona on Hawaii Island. Our community is made up largely of Native Hawaiian families who live on their ancestral lands and who continue to rely on their lands and their marine resources for subsistence. These are families who know and continue to benefit from their traditional resource management practices. I realize that I have been allotted three minutes to speak. I contrast that with the almost 30 years that this plan has been in the making. I believe that the plan speaks for itself. It's comprehensive, it's community-driven and community co-managed. 
It has been vetted by the Department of Land and Natural Resources. It has received input, review, and revision based on community, agency, and scientific participation. It understandably, understandably that not everyone may agree with the plan, but the process by which the plan has reached this point has been open and deliberate in reaching out to all interested parties, both for and against. And this is not the end, it is a beginning. The plan is a living document and should remain open to improvement and revision. At this time in history, we cannot ignore the impacts brought on by the pandemic on Hawaii and its peoples, particularly in the native population. In a time when our economy has all but collapsed, residents are calling out for new economies and new ways to manage it. An economy that does not sacrifice our environment, our culture, or our natural resources, but rather an economy that protects and sustains them for our future beneficiaries. Communities are calling for more voice in the decisions that affect their individual communities. This plan is not a threat to Molokai's community. It actually will provide more voice. I realize that it is not the Hawaiian way for someone from another island or another community like myself to insert oneself into the local issues. My apologies if I offend anyone. However, I do feel that community-based resource management is important for all Native Hawaiian communities who value their resources and their traditions, communities like the one I live in. Lastly, I believe that uh, DAR will recommend that the plan proceed on for review and approval by the Board of Land and Natural Resources and then on to the governor. That review would take place at a regularly scheduled meeting of the BLNR and that the meeting will be open for public comment. I ask that DAR recommend placing Moomomi's proposal and management plan for review, review and approval by the BLNR and that DAR support its final acceptance. Mahalo for the, this opportunity to speak, speak in support of Moomomi's proposal and management plan. And I wanna give a special thanks to staff for facilitating our online access. Thank you for your testimony. Next up, we have Hannah Springer. Filina Maine. I am Hannah Kihalani Springer. Can you hear me? Yep. Loud and clear. Thank you. Filina Maine. I am Hannah Kihalani Springer of Ka'upulehu North Kwana Hawaii, and I am here to testify in favor of the proposed Mo'omomi community based subsistence fishing area rules. The Malama Aina Lavai Apono work that the Ho'olehua Homestead and Palau Moku community members are doing is to sustain fish and shoreline abundance in keeping with ages old practices that are passed from the lips of one generation to the ears of the next, and now from the voices of Mo'omomi to us. The Malama Aina Lavai Opono work that the Division of Aquatic Resources and the Department of Land and Natural Resources are engaging in now is new. And communities from across the Paiaina are coming forward to Kokua U. At home at Ka'upulehu North Kona, our community has also gone through the Chapter 91 rulemaking process. We are now four years into our approved rule amendment. At Haena Kawai, they are five years into theirs. In both places, the monitoring reports are positive and we would expect the same upon approval and implementation of the Mo'omomi CBSFA rules. When we present our proposals to DAR, we come in good faith and commitment to the chapter 91 public review process. It is an administrative process. The proposals are to be judged on their merits. It is not a popularity contest. And it is of course a blessing when merit and popularity intersect. At Ka'upulehu, we know of skeptics then who looking at the resources now see the merit of our proposal. Ha, Ena, Ka'upulehu and Mo'omomi are the first three communities to come before you with Ma'alama Aina, Lavai Apono rule packages. And we pray that together we are improving the rule review and decision-making process so that subsequent communities who make similar petitions can work with their partners, public and private, those who are supportive, and even those who are skeptical 
to improve subsistence fishing conditions in the places held so dear from one generation to the next. Tonight, Mo'omomi made the kahea and we are responding. In closing, me kea kua, o kia ho'i ka ue pule aku nei, i mahua hua loa aku ko ka ko aloha, a me kana au au, a me kea ka mai o, i ho'o mau popo ho'i, ka ko i na mea mai ka i loa, me kea kua. This is my prayer, that our aloha may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that we may be able to discern what is best. Mahalo kea kua. Mahalo no kako. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Noalani Lee. I think we can hear you loud and clear if you want to go ahead with your testimony. E malamai kai na dona kaua kau. E malamai kai na nona kaua kau. O olohi kaua nona kaua kau. O olohi kaua nona kaua kau. E malamai kai na nona kaua kau. E malamai kai na me kamana o nona keki. Kia i kai na nona kaua kau. Kia i kai na nona kaua kau. Aloha i kai na nona kaua kau. Aloha i kai na nona kaua kau. E ala e ala e a e e e. Ke ino anu kai na. Aloha mai ki aloha. I'm Noilani Lee and I live in Kalai. I'm okay with my two children. For the past 15 years, I've had the honor and the privilege of caring for two of our beautiful fish ponds on Molokai, and also being a volunteer facilitator for many of our community meetings on this island. The oli that I just did was written by my auntie, Gordine Lelehua Bailey. Uh, I did that oli particularly tonight because it reminds me of why I love Molokai. I love Molokai because it talks about taking care of the land. It takes up, talks about listening to our resources. It talks about taking care of the land in the thought of our keiki in the future. It talks about being fierce guardians of our resources. And it talks about love of our land. And I think that all of our people on Molokai have that in common. And I stand here today with my sons firmly and strongly in support of the CBSFA for Molokai. One of the things I've learned with working with so many beautiful kupuna, especially Molokai kupuna, and uh, especially with Mo'omomi, with Uncle Mac Poipoi, is the importance of remembering that aloha aina also means malama aina. And I think many times today people think that they aloha aina because they have an intimate connection through hunting and fishing. But we have to remember that our kuleana is not just to take, but to take care. In my opinion, when we see the reciprocity disappear, that's when pains emerge, both in personal relationships and with our relationship with the aina and the, the land and the sea. When we are out of balance, we are not in pono. And that is why our kupuna gave us all these brilliant sayings. Leave a place better than you found it. Take only what you need. Pull one, plant two. I think of these sayings and I think of the treasures our kupuna left for us. Yes, there may be more fish at Mo Momi now than in other places, but that's because it's been cared for for so long by so many. And we need to continue this for our children and our children's children. My name is Noilan Lee and I'm in support of Mo'omomi's CBSFA. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Max Phillips. I'm sorry, Brian. Ka'uluwai and Nohokai have been waiting patiently all night to testify as well. And I was. Oh, told sorry, sorry. I thought you were doing combined. So go ahead. Sorry. Well, I love to fish. It's, my, it's technically my life. I caught 
seven papilla a couple weeks ago with my pool and I let all of them go except for one, the one that I used to, to feed my family. And well, I only take what I need and I support CESFA for my own mom. And this is our sign that we did. So there's two cool people, and there's me, two uhu, ula ula, two ula lobsters, 15 moi, 20 kole. And if you go, if you go one day, that's 41 fish per 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 day. And if you if if I go with my brother, and we're really good fishermen, we get 82 fish in one day. But if I went two days in one week, then I get 164 fish, which is too much. So, yeah. Your point Aloha. Is <laughs> Thank you for your testimony. Aloha, my name is Kelly Nokaiwaka Lia Mashida. And I think that we should protect Mo'omomi and protect the fish in it so that our keiki can have have fish too and do you want to talk about your work caring for the Aina? I've gone to every almost every beach cleanup at Mo'omomi since I was a baby. What, do this, what does that mean to you when you go to the cleanups? It means that I'm helping the ocean. Why is that important? So that the fish can keep going and that they don't die from the trash too. That's right. And what else is a problem? People are taking too much fish. And what should we take? Only that much <laughs> or less or less i'm yeah. supporting <laughs> cbs cafe do you want to say aloha aloha thank you all for your testimony tonight mahalo brian next up is max phillips you're on mute max how about this? Aloha mai kako. My name is Max Phillips and I am the Hawaii Director and Attorney for the Center for Biological Diversity. Our nonprofit is made up of scientists, attorneys, and activists dedicated to our native threatened and wild spaces and the species that depend on it. I mahalo dar for this opportunity to give our testimony and strong support of Mumu Mumu's CBSFA and we Hope that um, DAR will recommend the adoption of these rules by DLNR because we believe it's the most effective way specifically to limit commercial activities that are harming our near shore resources, especially in that area and then across Pai Aina. And I would limit my testimony because those boys just said it all. So mahalo for this opportunity. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Presley Wan.
I think we're going to um, move on to Damien Kennison. Oh, 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 oh never, never mind. There, there's Uncle Press. Uh, Press Juan, um, please uh, go ahead with your testimony. You're, you're on mute. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Can you yeah. hear me now? Thank you. Sorry. Um, I, I zoom above better than I zoom. Sorry. Um, aloha, board members. My name is Presley Wan. Currently, I am the president for Hui Makaena Na Omakana in Haena, Kauai. Haena is currently the only CBSFA in the state. I am here to here tonight on behalf of our 30 plus members of our Hui Makaena Na to support uh, Momomi's CBSFA pursuit. We do not want to we're not here to tell Molokai residents what, what is good for their place because our community didn't appreciate outside influences and special interest groups, especially in our, in our pursuit. But I just um, wanna say that there are two, two parts of being a good fisherman. One is, one is harvesting, the harvesting part, and the other part is the Malama part. It is a kuleana, not a right to fish pono. I think Uncle Mac put it the best. Um, don't take something you don't know how to replace. Um, uh, NLCBSFA is working well for us and we wanna support Momomi's CBSFA pursuit. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next up, we have Damien Kennison. Say hello. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep, we can hear you. We can't see you, but we can hear you. Okay. Hang on. There you go. Okay, my name is uh, Damien Kennison. I live in Hokena, South Kona, Hawaii Island. I'm representing my family, the George and Louisa Alani Oana. Mahalo for uh, to the Molokai people for allowing me to express my manao. I'm testifying in support of the Momomi CBF, CBFSA. I first met Kelsey McBoy Boy on Molokai in 2003 at a meeting of community representatives from around the state. This movement to empower communities to have a say in managing their resources started there. Mac, Izohana, and other supporters have been working for many years to establish a community-based marine management plan to allow the Molokai community to have a say in how their fish are harvested at Momomi. He has represented Izohana well through his work with youths and community groups by actually practicing the values taught to him by his Ohana. Along with Mac, we have come to realize that our generation is probably the last chance to make sure that our knowledge, our knowledge is passed on to our kiki through hands-on teaching. As Kapuna pass on, the first-hand knowledge of traditional fishing practices is being lost leaving a void which cannot be filled through words in a book. This community-based subsistence fishing area is just a fancy word for our Hawaiian value of malama haina or haina momona. This process will help us to retain our native Hawaiian gathering rights, perpetuate our cultural practices, and protect our ia from over-harvesting and unsustainable fishing practices. In closing, I would like to say to those of you who oppose this proposal, let us all work together in Hui for the future of our Ohana, the Hawaiian people. Hui to protect our ia from those who have no respect for our culture. Hui to protect our ia from people who don't care if there are fish left for our moapuna and their children's children. We to protect our ear now before it is too late. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. 
Thank you for your testimony. Next up, we have Shea Kamaka'ala. Can you hear me okay, Brian? Yep, I can see you and hear you. Okay, great. Um, aloha mai kako. My name is Shea Kamaka'ala and I am from Punalu'u and Kahana Ko'olalo O'ahu. As a Native Hawaiian and environmental rights attorney, I share my strong support for the Mo'omomi CBSFA and the generations of knowledge and hard work that have informed the proposed rules before DLNR. I offer this testimony to also shed light on any concerns and questions about funding and NGO support from Omomi. Born and raised amongst Ko'olaloa fishermen, both subsistence and commercial, I've seen lobster populations die within my lifespan, and I'm only in my 30s. From this, I was inspired to attend law school and find a way to make a difference. I was introduced to CBSFAs while in law school as a way for my fishing ohana and community to work proactively with government to better care for our nearshore fishery. After graduating from law school, I was also afforded the opportunity to work with the Hui Malama Omo Omomi to update, finalize, and submit their CBSFA management plan to DLNR, which entailed over 50 meetings and counting. Photoed behind me is one of those meetings that occurred well before my time and involvement in the project. I also had the opportunity to serve as the DAR CBSFA coordinator from 2017 to 2018. With positions and opportunities from grants like that of Harold K. Castle Foundation, I had options outside of a traditional legal career. Instead, I was afforded opportunities to work with communities statewide to protect their lands and fisheries in partnership with government. This was no easy task, but I have learned and have grown so much as a Hawaiian because of it. I am blessed to have learned so much from the communities and lands we serve and from my deal and our colleagues across the state. You all are doing honorable and respectable work upholding the state's constitutional obligations to protect Native Hawaiian subsistence, cultural and religious practices and the state's public trust resources. I am humbled and a lifelong student of Mo'omomi, and I hope more young Kanaka like myself are afforded opportunities to work for educational institutions and conservation organizations to protect the resiliency of our lands, fisheries, and communities statewide. Mahala nui loa for the opportunity to testify in strong support of the Mo'omomi CBSFA. Thank you for testifying. Mahalo. Next up is Ted Blake. Okay, we can see you, Ted. Ted, can you hear me? I'm not sure if the audio is working. We can see you. I'm not sure uh, if you can hear us or if we can hear you. Doesn't sound like we can hear you. Uh, you're not muted. Do you have a microphone on your computer? Yes. We can't hear you, so um, maybe we'll let you see if you can work out the microphone on your computer and, and come back to you. So next up, uh, we have Kavika winners. You're on mute, Kavika. Hey, aloha mai kako. Um, my name is Kavika Winter. I'm testifying in strong support of the Mo'omomi CBSFA. Um, testifying on behalf of my ohana, my two kids here behind me in the midst of Limahuli. Um, you know, if it wasn't for the work that Uncle Mac has done at Mo'omomi, Haena would have never gotten it CBSFA. And I've been fortunate enough to have raised my kids on, from, on the fish of Haena. And, you know, when we had our kupuna alive, Uncle Tommy Hashimoto, he was still alive. He would, he would tell us about 
all the fish, the fisheries he would see declining in his lifetime, the moi and the kala. And in 2015, a few years after that, after we got the rules package in place for Haena, these fish started to come back. And before Uncle Tom passed, he got to see that. So I can speak, I know there's a lot of concerns. You know, when we were going through our process in Haena, people had concerns, but the, the proof is in the pudding. Like Uncle Max says, the proof is in their mouth. The people of Haena are eating more fish because there is more fish. Um, one thing you, you'll notice today is that there's nobody from Kauai testifying against this. It's because the CBSFA program works. Um, so with that, I will say mahalo to Uncle Mac and we support you and all of the efforts in Mo'omomi. Aloha. Thank you for your testimony. I think we'll go back to Ted Blake and see if his audio microphone issue uh, may have been resolved. Okay, it looks like Ted is still having some, oh, there's Ted. <laughs> I don't know if we can hear you. <laughs> nope. Looks like the audio still need to, needs to be uh, fixed. Maybe you can reboot, um, relaunch Zoom, um, but we'll, we'll keep trying. I um, think we'll move on to Saul, Keho, uh, Ahola, Hala, Hala. Next. Aloha, Brian. It's Kaho'o Hala Hala. Uh, <laughs> um, thank you um, for allowing me to uh, participate in uh, and to Kaho'o, um, all of those who support the um, CBSFA for Mo'omobe Molokai. Um, I wanted to present to us uh, tonight the thought that um, while we're looking at the opportunity to create these um, management areas, I wanted to remind us that we have a history that speaks to the fact that the Hawaiian people come from a very deep genealogy that begins with the Kumulipo. And in the Kumulipo, it talks about the creation of the first creature of the sea the uku koa koa, and then it repeats all of the following uh, evolution and creation of all the other animals from the sea, the plants, and then even to the lands and to the air. And, um, and we, the people, do not come until much further in the creation of the aina and the honua. And so we bear um, an inherent responsibility for the care of all of our natural resources, all of our biocultural resources. And um, therefore, the idea of creating a CBSFA is not a new uh, concept for us. In fact, many of the testifiers have already stated that Malama Aina, Aloha Aina, these are our inherent responsibility as the caretakers of all creatures that precede us. And therefore, in the opportunity that we are seeking now is to reconnect the Hawaiian responsibility to place and resources. And therefore, um, CBSFAs um, are, are not new concepts to us, but it is surely lacking that we have been really separated from our inherent responsibility. And so we're seeking now to regain some of that and so thanks to the work of Uncle Mac Poi Poi of Molokai, and also to the work that had been established by the people of Haena and Kaupulehu, that these are the leaders that are seeking a way for us to find uh, the opportunity to reconnect us to our inherent responsibility as keepers of the Aina. So the concept we want to promote is Aloha Aina, and the responsibility we want to express is Malama Aina, and with that, we will help in what is needed in these challenging times, the opportunity to seek food security, the opportunity to seek uh, changes that are gonna be impacted by global change, climate change, 
And I think that we have an opportunity to help become partners to resolve these problems because we have that inherent responsibility. So I would implore you to seek the approval of the Board of Land and Natural Resources um, members to support Mo'omomi and to allow Hawaiians to be the practitioners and the keepers to aloha and malama'ina. Thank you for your time. Thank you for testifying, Uncle Saul Keho Ohalahala. Keho Ohalahala. Sorry, I'll work on that. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Nick Palumbo. <laughs> I'm Ben Skip, how are you? Oh, hi. Hi, hey, uh, you go Nick ahead. Colombo. Um, I'm from the island of Lanai, just like Uncle Saul, Koho Ohalahala. And, um, you know, meeting Uncle Mac about 10 years ago changed my life. The first thing I wanted to do is I knew where he's from. I know he has so much knowledge of the ocean. I wanted to show him a picture of this big moi I caught. And I was trying to impress the guy. And uh, he told me, you know, those big ones are full of eggs. But better you catch the small ones, you know, and, and he got me thinking, you know. I have four children and a mother. If I go fishing for moi with five of them and me, I can come home with 90 moi legitimately. You know, that's terrible. That's overfishing. You know, these rules, the moi, the kumu, the lobster, kole kole, opihi, uhu, that's all elite stuff, yeah? Hawaiian practitioners, you know, before you cannot even eat moi. And now um, I came to this meeting because I wanted to hear people that oppose this and what they had to say. And in the chat, it says, get fish, get fish. Well, you guys can credit Uncle Matt, Mac them, and la'a um, because they've been taking care, you know? And for me as an outsider, I would never go down there. You know why? 2014, had one brother jump on a boat, guys got thrown off the boat because they protect their resource because it's very precious, yeah? But sometimes people gotta eat kala, nenui, can make nenui poki, a hole hole. You know, there's so much fish. Don't need to be greedy. Let it replenish. The reason why there's fish is because these, you know, because there's rules, because there's people taking care of. On Lanai with COVID-19, we have Batu addicts over harvesting Opihi to buy more dope. We have people raiding all the resources from Maui because of the rules. Um, what we need to do is get this community-based subsistence fishing area in more areas, you know, more islands. Um, you know, Kavika Winters, I've known him forever. He, thank God they're taking care. Thank God for Uncle Mac. You know, that boy, no, Nolani Lee, her son, he did the math, his presentation. He's my hero right now. That little girl that loves lobster. Hey, you take your family. You can still grab two lobster, you know? And that's just one of you. You take your family, each person, you know? He did the math. It just blows my mind. I want to hear somebody who has opposition against this because Uncle Mac them, they're real fishermen, yeah? They really care for this place. They're real Hawaiians. Um, it just blows my mind. The shrines on the land, they tell a tale of what's in the ocean. It's all right there. If you know too much and it falls in the wrong hands, it can be very dangerous and it can deplete the whole thing very quickly. So you need the community to monitor that Makai watch, you know, you darn straight. We don't have that here. We don't have shame. We have people overfishing, raiding. Anyway, um, I just wanted to show my support and show up. And uh, mahalo, Uncle Mac. Mahalo, uh, Noilani Lee, for having your children share. And thank you, Brian, for letting me testify. Aloha. Thank you for your testimony. We are going to go back to Ted Blake. I believe his audio issues have been resolved and we're crossing our yeah. fingers. So Ted Blake, you're, you're up. How's that? Can you hear me? Oh, yep, we can hear you loud and clear. We can't see you, but we can hear you. Go ahead. We'll go with that. 
I'm a, that's not a problem whether you can see me or not, as long as you can hear me. Oh, now we can see you. <laughs> I just wanted to um, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Ted Blake. I live on the island of Kauai in the Moko of Kona and the Ahupua of Kolo. My introduction to the CBSFA came at when I joined uh, the Kua organization, Yalapu and Kua. And we had a gathering at Molokai and, um, at Momomi. And <clears throat> I had met Mac many years ago, ago before I saw him again. And I listened to him and I said, you better get plenty of knowledge. And I looked at the group and I said, you know, what we're doing is something that's so very important for our, for our communities. In our, on our island and throughout the state. And it gave me a, you know, it just started me on this on this journey that <clears throat> I was looking more for caring for our Aina and Malama Aina and see if we could um, do something about our food problems. When I was younger, my dad used to farm. Farming was his hobby, took up all my spare time. And we had, we grew tomatoes and he was the ag guy for Kauai and I saw, and he used to fish on weekends and we used to go down to the North Shore, spend the weekend with the pikes. And a lot of stuff that I heard when I was at um, work down at Ahana, when they're doing the CBSFA came back to me and I never knew the reasons why my dad said, listen, you guys, you guys want to play on the sand, you go down by the rocks, don't go where, you know, the water just comes up to the, the sand. And after working with the CBSFA, I realized what that what, what the reason was. The pool come up, the small pool come up, and of course you go down to the, the the water line. They see your shadow, and then they, you know, they run away, and they may get taken out by the current, or they may be food for bigger fish out there. And it's just this type of stuff that once you know it, it makes sense, and. I decided at that time I would become a champion for this because, you know, you're not telling guys you can't do it. You just say, listen, you don't have to take everything that's in there, you know, take for yourself what you want to eat and come back. You know, we had, when we started making bigger coolers, that's when you wanted to fill them all up. And how long does, you know, you leave them in the freezer? Do you, do you eat them all? Hopefully most people do, but a lot of it gets freezer burned because you know, you got way too much fish. But it's just when I when I was down at uh, Kupulehu and we had we did some um, activity with them, I was really impressed with the younger kids, eight, nine, ten, eleven, their knowledge that they picked up from all the kupuna around there that was going through their CBSFA also, and you know just to reiterate what Kabika says, I don't know anybody on Kauai that's against this now. We had people that are very Question, question the motives of the CBSFA at Hyanna. And, you know, it, it was difficult to, to um, agree, but those guys right now, I think uh, they would back us up more than anything else because they've seen what has happened and how the thing, how Hyanna has replenished itself. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony. I support, I so, hold on, I support Mac and all his efforts. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Let's see, next up we have Malia Kipapa. Hey, Malia, we can see you. Can you hear me? Yep, can hear you as well. Hello. Oh, it's a long name. Okay. Mahalo. Um, aloha my kako, mahalo nui for providing this space for us to provide testimony. Um, my name is Malia Kipapa and I am a resident of Kealakehe, North Kona on the Mokupuni of Hawaii. And I represent my Kipapa Ohana as a lineal descendant from the Ahupa of Pahoehoe. We are in support of the designation of this area as a community-based subsistence fishing area and the adoption of the proposed rules by DLNR. The Kipapo Ohana supports the Ho'olehua homestead and Palau families in their efforts 
to engage in this public administrative process to ensure and sustain their kapu and ono. Kapu and ono in this particular community comes in the form as stated in the proposed rules as uhu, kumu, kole, moi, ula, opihi, and limu. And I mentioned the ino of these poe because it is evident that the scarcity of these species that directly feed the people of this community is at stake. As a strong advocate for traditional fishing practices and natural resource management, it is essential for us to support communities that have generational ties and knowledge of the area that they malama and that aina and kai that malama them in this process of reciprocity. As a native Hawaiian, a conservation and environmental professional and a community member of West Hawaii, the place-based fishing rules proposed for the fishery of Mo'omomi, in my opinion, has been carefully and thoughtfully considered and vetted from a Ike Kupuna perspective with the support of scientific evidence. It is important that we look at these examples to regulate and manage fisheries like Mo'omomi because we know that subsistent and responsible harvesting is the only way to ensure resource regeneration and abundance. Lastly, I would like to acknowledge Uncle Mac Poipoi and his efforts as he continues to stand strong and resilient through all adversities. And we hapai and honor Anakala and his efforts as it is not an easy or comfortable place to be sometimes when we need to maintain the integrity of traditional familial practices that may create pilikia within the ohana, but instead not losing the focus and intention, which is to ensure the kapu and ono of his place. Again, my name is Malia Kipapa, and we, the Kipapa Ohana of Kona Akau, Mapohoihoi, support the proposed CBSFA, and we humbly ask for the support from DLNR for the implementation and designation of the CBSFA for Mo'omomi. Mahalo nui na Kipapa Ohana. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next up, we have Shiani Rollins. Aloha mai kako. Mahalo for this opportunity to testify. <clears throat> Ova Okiani Rollins Fernandez. I am the Maui County Council Vice Chair and Kupa of Molokai. Born and raised here as far back as I can trace my mo'oku how my ancestors have called Molokai home. I am the daughter and granddaughter of a former commercial fisherman and my family and I are homesteaders in Ho'olehua. I am in strong support of the Mo'omomi CBSFA and urge DAR to recommend the passage of the proposed rules unamended. Mahalo to Dar for continuing to work with our community to move these rules forward. Our legacy is Molokai Aina Momona, but over the years, our resources have been overtaxed. Advanced fishing and diving equipment have made it easier and faster to gather high quantities of fish. After over 25 years of data collection, Hui Malama Omomi has documented the decline of marine life overall, but the population of five species in particular have diminished more so than others. We're not saying that there are no fish, there are fish. What we are saying is that there has been an observed decline and to wait until the fish are gone to take any action to protect them would be too late. We were raised and taught to ensure that our future mo'opuna, seven generations from now, will have the resources they will need to subsist. In addition to safeguarding food for our future generations, this issue is also about the survival and perpetuation of our traditional and customary practices passed down by kupuna. The CBSFA designation would grant the community more authority than it currently possesses by co-managing with DLNR, and our dual care officers are our Molokai boys. Misconceptions have made these rules challenging to pass. You may have received testimony in opposition that claimed that the CBSFA would prevent people from being able to gather for subsistence purposes or prevent members of our community from throwing flowers to show our loved ones whose ashes were spread there that we still think of them. Papa Walter, I would never support this if that was what would happen. These are logical fallacies and couldn't be farther from the truth. You may have received testimony fearing the penalties for violating the rules while simultaneously hearing that overfishing is not occurring. So if it isn't, 
then they shouldn't fear the penalties. You may have received testimony requesting that we start over, but I urge you to ask what they would do differently that would warrant starting, starting over and why would they not propose amendments to these rules? From what I have heard, the reason the opposition has not proposed amendments to these rules that, that are before us is because there's a fundamental disagreement on the basic premise of whether there's decline of fish population and therefore rules to protect these species are unnecessary. I support and trust the data that was collected over the years that led to the creation of this management plan. As a council member, I know that 100% agreement on anything is rare but if you listen closely to the points of those who oppose this there is so much that we actually agree on those who gather the way our kupuna taught us would not be impacted if this became law haena's cbsfa is a beautiful example of how successful this could be lastly i'm a proud mommy tonight after watching my daughter testify our children are our next generations and the reason we fight so hard to protect what we have Mahalo to all of our community members for participating. Civic engagement is critical to any process, and I encourage our community to continue to remain engaged in all issues affecting Molokai. Mahalo again for this opportunity to testify. Aloha. Thank you for your testimony. Next up, we have Kuale Keakealani. Aloha Pumehana Kako Ikea Ahiahi. Uh, I come to you all from my home in Hawaii Mea, Mokupuni o Hawaii. Greetings to all of you. Um, I, Roberta Kuulei Kiakialani, come before you all in absolute support of this iini, the desire of our hui malama o moomi, the ho'olehua, Hawaiian homesteaders, and the Palau community members. I strongly urge uh, you. Uh, the people who are seated to make these decisions to yes, consider, ponder, contemplate, and ultimately koho to choose. My aina in North Kona of Pu'ua Nahulu, Pu'ua Awa'a, and Kaupulehu um, ground me every minute that I have this uh, ha'ola, the breath of life in my kino. And I speak the name of your places, your beloved places, this uh, Kalai o Kailio to Nihua Flats, to your Aina on Molokai. We extend our aloha from our Aina. Uh, my dad always says to us, Ma'a, be Ma'a to your place. I've heard many kupuna, right? All of us, I think, hold, hold that as truth. Be Ma'a, Ma'a, know your place. And who better than, than our people of Molokai? they who are ma'a to their place, to thereby set forth these rules to help them sustain the abundance of, of their aina, their beloved lands. Uh, there was a, a TED talk recently and I wanna share with you folks uh, a couple of things, thoughts from this TED talk that specifically talked about rules. But it, it, uh, she had mentioned here that rules are powerful they allow us to change and harmonize our behavior without being the same. Rules have a special force. They allow us to gather across differences. Uh, that's a very strong statement for me and something that I impress upon all of us testifying, listening, and, and ultimately you dis decision makers that um, you look to this as an opportunity for you as a government agency to um, Again, ho'i ho'i, right? This restoration of our faith in the system that we all are within. I wanna end with this poem that I wrote um, and I, I leave you with this thought and the, with this thought. <laughs> Let's assemble around this thought, this issue, this cause, this reason. The campfire is lit. The heat of the fire blows upon the faces of those seated. Enna, enna, fire burns within, swirling, stirring, turbulent energies. Released oni, action. My pa'a ikaleo, find your voice, even if it's a reach, reach deep. Grab a hold and pull it up. Struggle may be apparent. Get your footing and hooky. 
thoughts align, Amy, search for where your thoughts settle. The flames of the campfire repeats the invite over and over. It calls, come and be seated. Who's he whose ears hear the kahea? Are they reaching deaf ears, reluctant ears, doubtful ears, fears, questioning, churning, expand potential? Where are your thoughts settling? The flames of the campfire are calling, echoing, pulsating, igniting. To you I say, seating is available. My request on behalf of my ohana, maliu, my look to favor with this CBS FMA. Mahalo piha, ahuiho yakako, po mali. Thank you for your testimony. Next up is Alex Connolly. Aloha, I'm Alex Puanani Connolly from Ko'olau Poko O'ahu testifying in support. I was hesitant to speak because who am I, an O'ahu girl to testify on behalf of a management plan for Mo'omomi, a place I've been less than a dozen times. But then I thought for all I have learned from Uncle Mac and for the pono this plan stands for, It'd be a shame on me to say nothing. Like Ati Ku'ule just said, my pa'ai kaleo. My generation, we hear the cautionary tales. We hear about our illusions of abundance and how it in no, way, in no way compares to what was. But how can we know? We know through kupuna recollection, through their stories of lived experience, and we can know through the actions they recommend and the solutions derived from their ike, like this CBSFA. Uncle Mac talks about being happy because he has what he needs. His family's healthy. He can go holo holo and come back and share. He really doesn't have to be going out of his way, dealing with the drama that comes with this kind of initiative. It's not a romantic effort, but truly selfless work. This is a proactive plan before things get worse. And as we're all sitting here in a pandemic, we know things can get worse. We always need to be looking ahead. Uncle Mac is a konohiki in this way and wants to ensure food security and the happiness it brings beyond his lifetime, beyond his generation, his coastline, even his island. He's inspired many leaders and communities as we hear here tonight. This is bigger than any one of us, although it will take all of us. And I hope the people in disagreement can take Uncle Mac and Auntie Davey up on their invitation to work together. A CBSFA stands for hope. It stands for people stepping up people rise into their kuleana so that the families of tomorrow, kauluvai, keoli nohokai, kaikena, who inspired us tonight, may their mo'opuna, whether they're 10th generation homesteaders or they reside anywhere else in Hawaii, may they know the mako naona. By giving this plan a chance, we're giving our meaola and hanauna ho a fighting chance to live aina momona. Mahalo for your time and consideration. Thank you for your testimony. Next up, we have Kevin Ching. Oh, wow. Aloha, Brian. Dar team and uh, the Board of Land and Natural Resources. I'm a little uh, blown away by all that I've heard, especially Alex's last testimony. Um, and so I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. My name is Kevin Chang. I'm a co-director of Kua Aina Ulu Awa Mo, which means grassroots growing to share responsibility. I am part of a team of folks who have a passion for bridging people, culture, and environmental governance as an essential part of rebuilding our island community's sense of wholeness. And we support the Moa Moe CBSA favorable package as proposed. Our acronym KUA means backbone and we were created by a network called Ealupu, of which that network's genesis um, is the genesis of or my organization, KUA. Um, it is also the genesis of, uh, well, Ealupu started in 2003 when Uncle Mac asked people to gather. Um, the activities that the community did in Mo'omome at the time was also the genesis of the law that we are talking about today and talking about implementing. Um, let's see. And so instead of belaboring everything I wrote here, which I cannot even read anymore at my age, um, just some themes I saw throughout this discussion is the importance of traditional laws and the perpetuation and practice of Malama Aina. This community group itself is not only taking care of the ocean, but taking care of the sacred lands of Omomi 
as well as the, the, the um, near shore and, and upper uh, Malka uh, lands. Um, another theme I've been seeing is this need and growing movement, not just in Hawaii, but around the world for local based indigenous uh, driven place-based initiatives to malama our environment. I've also seen some testimony that mentioned how the rules really may, may sound limiting, but really are very broad and can feed families. Thank you to Loya's son, uh, making that very clear. Um, I also saw an invitation to work things out, which I think is important and I hope will continue. And I hope that the folks who oppose these rules will find a way to work together and move forward because that is one of the greatest seeds of this kind of work. I've also seen that the world and United Nations has recognized the work of the community here as important, not just to Hawaii, but to the way we think about how we take care of our, our planet. I've also seen that at this time, we're reflecting more because of this COVID. We're reflecting more on the things that we generally take for granted. And, is it, and this, these rules represent the hope that Alex talks about. And when I hear folks talk about, uh, when, I, when I listen to some of the opposition's discussion um, about this process being rushed, 27, 27 years to me is, is not a rush at all. And I hope that you guys will find a way to build on what has been built over the past 27 years. Because if we were to scratch everything and stop, we are choosing a path of hope. But when we choose this path, we choose the path of working together. Uh, sorry. When, if we choose to work together on, on this path and to build a CBSFA, we're taking a pathway of hope. If we choose to scratch everything, we're choosing a pathway of despair. Please choose hope, mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next up, we have Mary Dudois. Aloha, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, aloha mai kako. My name is Mary Durua, and I'm testifying in support of the CBSFA from Mo'omomi. I am Molokai born and raised, and I'm blessed to live on Holehua homestead with my husband and our four children, as my ohana has done for at least four generations. I'm a teacher at Molokai Middle School, where over 80% of our students are Hawaiian, and this is common among the rest of our Molokai schools. Molokai is special in this way, and it's my joy to teach our keiki of their strong cultural background and the intelligence possessed by their ancestors. I am continually blown away by the ingenious practices of our, of our kupuna, such as the ahupua system, which shows how meticulously it was designed to utilize creation in the most efficient and effective way. The systems that were in place during the days of our ancestors were purposeful and structured. There, was, there were seasons to gather, and seasons to rest. There are many rules and fierce punishments. While I'm glad we no longer live under the fear brought about by the kapu system of those days, the lack of such systems brought about added kuleana, especially in regards to how we manage our resources. We teach our children that ike kupuna is valuable and it baffles me. It baffles me that there is opposition to a plan that has been built on that very ike, that very knowledge that is often so revered. Here on Molokai, I've, I've heard and read comments in opposition that have incited fear in the minds of many Molokai people. I've heard comments made about the proposed bag limits that can be caught and how much can be caught, incorrect remarks. I heard remarks being made um, that it wouldn't be able to feed their family. So I'd like to ask those who are worried about that to think about this. If two uhu, 20 kole, 15 moi, and two lobsters per person per day is not enough to feed your family, then what is? If plenty is not enough for you, then what is? My father is known by those who like him and those who don't as a master fisherman. This is not because he knows how to catch plenty fish, which he does. He's a master because he understands and respects the habitats and what they need to thrive. He catches a big fish and throws it back because he understands 
the contributions each member of an ecosystem offers. He has gathered data that no one else I know knows how to gather. He truly understands what it takes to maintain and encourage thriving abundant ocean resources. In other words, one cannot assume that big waves are going to replenish what has been over harvested. This will take intentional and structured practices aimed at allowing our delicacies to replenish. I do not believe people will starve with these bag limits. In fact, I think it's clear that it is more than enough to feed one's family, even a big one with big appetites. But what will happen is generations to come will know what they taste like. Generations to come will still be able to fish and catch food for their families. I read, I read that the barge will increase costs by 46% for Molokai. Yeah? It is imperative that Molokai, re which relies so heavily on young brothers for food, looks towards embracing sustainability. Remember the pro proposed bag limit is per person per day. And under the proposed CBSFA, you can catch, still can catch Ininui, Papio, Kala with no bag limit, in addition to those regulated fish during the proper seasons. Sometimes we must sacrifice our preferences to have a positive impact for everyone, not just our own families. Molokai is special because we all know each other. We take care of each other. This is not a foreign concept. So for those in opposition to this plan, I ask you to do what we born and raised on Molokai are naturally inclined to do, which is putting others before ourselves. I kakao the, the proposed CBSFA plan and mahalo my dad for all his hard work, perseverance, and just the aloha he has for his kupuna, for those who are here now and for the next generation, mahalo. Thank you for your testimony. Next we have Justin. Lua Fale Mana. Aloha, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much for uh, listening to this testimony. Uh, my name is Justin Lua Fale Mana. I'm born and raised on Molokai, um, mostly up Mana'e. So I wasn't raised in Holy Hua area. However, my grandmother, Harriet Polly Patricia Kaaba, was raised in Holihua and on Momomi Ave. And the only work I do down there is conservation work, um, from taking care of the beaches to taking care of the, the birds, the shearwaters, and our, our habitat that we have now. I am in support of the CBSFA and I have three kids and we need to look to the future, our generation, our kids, to make sure that they have the resources and the food that we have. Um, I'm 36 years old. And the reason I tell my age is because in my 36 years of life here on Molokai, I am guilty of um, taking more than what I should have. From Opihi to lobsters to the Hivai, and I'm here to make a change, to shape my mind differently for the future, for the kids, for our kids, for the Molokai community. Um, and I ask all the Molokai community, I love them, I love you all, who support and don't support, you know. But if we look at each other, we got to make a change. We got to shape our mindset differently. We got to start now. If, it's, if we don't start now, it's going to be too late. It's gonna to be too late. My ohana is the Naki ohana. Um, we're known for, for fishermen. However, um, I took a different path. I'm more of a mountain kind of guy. Um, you know, the ocean, I do love the ocean. However, it's just, um, I just have different challenges. You see, let's just say, but we need to take care of resources. We need to take care of what we have. It's not our given right to just go and gather. It's more of a kuleana responsibility to take care of what we have and what we can uh, save for the future of our generations, of our kids. So we need to take that into accountability. Please, to all my friends, all the community members, just look into you guys' hearts, look into your heart, your mind, and look at your kids. Look at your nieces, your nephews. Look at the people, the Molokai people, the people that are going to come after us. The decisions we make today, good or bad, 
is going to impact their lives. We need to start making a change now. Let's just shake their minds. 20 kole. I was blessed today to eat five kole from my two nephews who went out diving. I'm so grateful and thankful. And as big as I am, those five kole filled me. And with two of them, two of them, they caught 18. And what a blessing I was able to, to, I was able to share and I was able to eat. To all the people out there, to all the Molokai community, to everyone, I thank you guys for listening to this testimony. Thank you, Dar. Please support the CBSFA. Mahalo. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Next up, we have Kuhao Zane. Hey, aloha. Can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Go ahead. Perfect. Uh, aloha kako. Kuhao Zane here, and I come from an unbroken generational practice of not only hula, but its surrounding arts, crafts, observations, beliefs, studies, and theories. Our practices and rituals rely on the livelihood of our kinolau, its regeneration, its environment, and its ability to thrive. I've learned a lot tonight. I learned a lot tonight through the questions and concerns about Mo'omomi. During my brief time hearing stories from both Uncle Mac, as well as growing up around Antikawila, one question resonates with me. Well, you know, I'm half Pake, so trans transactional value is super important. We need to ensure that the transactional value is delivered to the environment. So I'd like to just reiterate something that Uncle Mac asked me. If you catch one fish, how you gonna put two more back? That said, I humbly support this Mo'omomi CBSFA. Mahalo, we hope. Thank you for your testimony. Next up, we have Keikama Helm. Aloha, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Aloha, my name is Keikama Helm. Um, I'm born and raised on the island of Molokai. And on behalf of myself, my wife, and my three kids, we come and uh, we fully support the CBSFA for the Mokomomi area. Um, I was privileged enough to uh, be a part of uh, work with Uncle Mac in the early 90s. And uh, just after Ubuy Malamo Mokomomi's inception. And I learned a lot about traditional fishing practices and ways to take care of our fisheries and resources. And during that time, um, I was a part of a, also a pilot project that designated an area in Mohomi for subsistence fishing only. And I can tell you that in that one year that that pilot project ran, we've seen papa with no lobster come to fruition with a lot of lobster in it. You know, kumu that came back tenfold. This in the one year that that area was designated. So I know it works. With that being said, I learned a lot from working down there and just from being around Uncle Mac and, and around the uh, Mo'omomi area. I learned how to take care of our resources better and Continue to try and teach it to my children today. When uh, we go down to the beach and we eat the OPD, and we think about how steadfast and resilient our people are, and that's what that means to me. It's not just a food that fills me physically, but also spiritually. And I think we as a people, especially in this day, needs those connections to count on to thrive as a, a culture and as a Hawaiian people. So again, my name is Kikama Helm and I'm here in full support of the community-based subsistence fishing area for Mo'omomi. Mahalo. For your testimony. Uh, next up, we have Malia Akutagawa, uh, who is gonna expand on her previous testimony. Hello, my kako. Mahalo for letting me finish my testimony earlier. My name is Malia Kutagawa, and I'm a child of Moloka Inuya Hina, 
Molokai Pule O O and Molokai Aina Momona. And I want to thank those who testified, um, who gave so much of their aloha and ike tonight. I feel very gratified that the different islands have come strong for us. We are working like one Kino, one Lahui, and I want to just mahalo all of you for that. Um, what I'd like to do is recognize that we have ohana more than just our present generation. We have three people, our kupuna that have gone before us and our descendants that will come after us. I bring them into the room. And I wanna also especially bring in Kumujanka Imikawa who shared with us the ancient ahakiole, our people's councils of which the state ahamoku law was passed and this manao is actually in the law itself on how the Ahamoku is supposed to operate and how we advise the State Department of Land and Natural Resources. So these are standards by which we have to modernly also follow. These are the eight realms of decision-making, Kalevalani, everything above the land, the air, the sky, the clouds, the birds, the rainbows, our celestial bodies that affect our life cycles. Kanakahonua, the natural resources important to sustain people, but they are valued for the intrinsic work. Papahe lolona, knowledge and intellect that is a valuable resource to be respected, maintained, and managed properly. It's the ike of our kupuna. Ke ihi ihi, the things that make a place sacred and the ceremonies associated with that. It's moana nui akea, this area that we're talking about, where you you look out from the highest vantage point out to sea, and you got a malama that, kahakai pepeao, the intertidal zone, the beach strand, the sand dune, this is all mo'omomi. Mauka, where the soil starts all the way up the mountain, namuliwai, our water resources, including our coastal springs. Our kupuna made decisions with these realms in mind. And the decision-making matrix, which my dear friend Kavika Winter shared with me, Haumana uh, of Kumujanka Imikawa, he said, our kupuna identified the problem and issue, critically examined potential solutions along those resource realms and what their effects would be, and then honoring our ancestral past and wisdom, addressing the needs of the present and establishing abundance for future generations. When I look at the work of Uncle Mac Poi Poi, I think of Papa He Lolona, which is knowledge and intellect that has to be honored and respected. And I thank him for making all these sacrifices for, sacrifices for us, where he could have just retired and forgot about it. But he knew what his kupuna was asking of him. And he's given his life for this and he's done it for all the other islands too and I think of him like the Lorax you know the guy that leave the leave this place and he said I speak for the trees uncle speaks for the Moana uncle speaks for Kahakai Pepeau and he's saying unless unless we do something we're gonna lose everything you know and for me I want my descendants to remember me in one good way the way I remember my ancestors. I want them to be proud of us that we accomplished this together. And this is, this is the legacy that Molokai has to continue. Pule o'o, strong in prayer. This is for the keiki. This is for those who are yet unborn. And if we fail in doing this, then Manaso, our bones get scattered to the wind and Manaso, we get forgotten because we're not, we're not going to deserve our, our descendants. We exist because of them. And so I ask that the right decision is made. And I ask those from Molokai, because I get the right for say that, because I'm from this place. I ask the guys from Molokai who are opposed to this, think twice, because unless, unless we change, we're going to lose everything. Mahalo. Thank you for your testimony, and I believe uh, this is the last testimony 
uh, for the public hearing. Uh, so we will be closing out public testimony and closing out this public hearing. Thank you for everyone that's participated tonight and um, tuned in to this uh, late evening public hearing. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you and uh, we'll be signing off the online uh, Zoom platform. Mahalo.